everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. Now, normally it would be RNG, but that is not what we have for you today. Unfortunately, uh, we are going to be having some other games, just some games that, uh, you know, games that I wanted to see, runners that I wanted to see. Uh, before we get into the runs today, uh, just a few quick reminders. GDQ is going to PAX West. Submissions are open now until June 21st. You can use exclamation PAX in Twitch chat for more information. SGDQ is also coming up, it's at the end of the month. Prize submissions are open until June 16th, so if you're crafty and would like to submit a prize to the event, you can go to gamesgamequick.com for more information. Also, our annual Juneteenth celebration will be this upcoming June 22nd and 23rd. Uh, if my math is, nope, that's next weekend, not this weekend. I have no idea what day it is, y'all. Uh, you can use exclamation Juneteenth in Twitch chat to find out the schedule for that, learn more. Uh, with all of that said, uh, I'll hand it over to you, let you introduce yourself here. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Zojalix, and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Uh, I have been running this game for a long time, uh, since about like fall of 2019. I am a former world record holder for both Any% Percent and New Game Plus on PC. I'm the current world record holder for all holocrons. Uh, and actually, as of last night, I did get the Xbox world record holder back, uh, world record back. I just haven't uploaded the video yet. So that's really nice. That's really cool to see. And yeah, I'm excited to show off this game. Um, I am primarily known for, if you guys aren't familiar with who I am, I am primarily uh, familiar for running Lord of the Rings games, uh, but I also have dabbled in uh, The Force Unleashed and other series like Kingdom Hearts and Star Wars and Spider-Man. So uh, this game is going to get very, very fast, very quick. You know, it's a speed run and there's a lot that's going to be happening very quickly. So um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, this game before we get into it. It is obviously it's the Force Unleashed 2 So it's the sequel to Star Wars the Force Unleashed 1 if you played both of these games You probably have better memories as a kid playing the first game uh, Well, I'm here to tell you that this is a better speed game and you can go ahead and compare the two games when they come to the speedrun if you're watching this game because um this, uh, well, Force Unleashed 1 is going to be showcased by Lifelike at SGDQ coming up in a couple of weeks. So you guys will definitely want to check that run out during SGDQ. It's going to be a super sick run. Um, both games are fantastic speed games. I highly recommend checking them out. But we're here to play the Force Unleashed 2, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Once I hit easy, time will start. So let's go ahead and jump into it in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Go. And just like Good that, luck. immediately I saw my capture card close. So we're going to go ahead. I figured out a fix to that last night because I was dealing with that yesterday during runs. So that'll be a fun thing to keep an eye out for. Um, But so in this game, we are going to be going through our tutorial. And the in this game, the game likes to handle things in threes. So it wants us to do three saber attacks, three force pushes, and then three force lightnings. So we're just going to go ahead and do all of those. And then we take out all of these enemies without hitting Juno here. So that way we can end this little like dream sequence kind of thing. Uh, I did see that quick message in chat. Yes, the Lord of the Rings PS2 games are the ones that I were running. Those are easily my favorite games that I've played. So in the Force on these two, since that is the game that we are playing here today, um, basically what happens during um, this story is this is Starkiller question mark. Um, and that is the reason why we say question mark is because Darth Vader has convinced Starkiller here that he is a clone. Now, the game never actually will reveal to us whether or not he is a clone. I would love it if he was actually the original. If you played the Force Unleashed 1 and did the light side ending, then you saw that Starkiller died at the end of the game. Um, but in this game, he comes back supposedly as a clone, and Darth Vader is trying to use him again to hunt down the rebel leaders. But this specific Star Killer is dealing with fragmented memories that are popping up in his brain all the time. Um, and not only is that something that he is dealing with, uh, Darth Vader also wants him to kill his waifu, Juno. And uh, Star Killer has decided that he does not want to kill his waifu. Um, 
the power of love is better than the power of the dark side of the force. So we're going to zap Darth Vader and literally break out the wall. And so this is our first little falling section. Uh, we're just going to be spamming left bumper to use force dash because, well, force dash means, well, speed. And not only that, but it will also help us to be mostly invulnerable to any damage that happens. Granted, you have to time it properly, and I'm not good at timing things. Uh, but, you know, when you just start mashing a button, you never really know what's going to happen. We got hit twice. That is perfectly okay. So we're going to go ahead and do a beautiful little superhero landing here and break all of this. I really hope they have property insurance because that's a lot of damage and flex tape isn't going to be the only thing you're going to need to fix that. We're just going to do a quick combo here, take all of these guys out and wait for this door to open. And when I said that this game is going to take off quickly, here we go. We are immediately going right into our first trick of the run. We're going to get hit in the face by this stormtrooper. We're going to dash over here. That skips a small little cutscene there. So that is a little cutscene and extra reinforcements that show up. We don't want to deal with them, so we just dash along the trigger there so that way we don't have to worry about it and we're gonna have another minor skip here but we're gonna take this time to start talking about the movement in this game so in any star wars game star wars is never complete without force dash well with um force dash is at the end of every single dash is you have this brief little period of end lag you can see it here as i'm dashing but in this game, if you jump and dash immediately again, you can actually cancel out the end lag for the movement, making you go significantly faster, as you can see me doing here. Now, obviously, for all of you Smash players, you will definitely appreciate removing any sort of end lag from any run that is going to be happening, from any trick. And we are going to be utilizing that a lot. It's going to be dash, jump, dash constantly throughout this entire level, trying to move quickly, obviously, because the goal of the game is to go fast. And another fun thing is we are playing on the Xbox 360 port. I'm playing it backwards compatible with the Xbox One. So if you have the Xbox One, you can pick this game up. I do believe this game is also on PS5, but it's some weird, like, subscription thing. Um, but... Because we are playing this game, and it is an older style game, you are going to be seeing the game lag. This game really does like to lag, which is not the most fun thing in the world, but hey, that's okay. It happens. Now, we've done all of that movement. We are going to be going into two major tricks back to back. Our first major trick that we are going to be hitting is going to be starting off here once we get through this door and learn how to use Force Mind Trick. So what we're going to have to do is you're going to see this turret off in front of us and we have to do a very, very, very specifically timed jump and dash in order to jump onto the barrel of the turret, skipping all of this shielding area which prevents us from having to take a whole lot of fights. Saves multiple minutes within the run and is super cool. Let's see if I can do this. The timing can be a little weird. All right, we're up on the guns. That's perfect. We're right here exactly where we want to be. Now we just have to slap our face against a shield here because that will reset our jump counter and allow us to basically infinitely hover. As long as there is a knockback animation, then we will keep our jump reset. Now we are going to be jumping right from there into another trick. We're going to dash over onto these boxes and then I'm going to do a three hit combo, slightly extending my hitbox and we're going to ride this gunship all the way off into the beautiful Kaminoan sunset. Uh, I don't know where that sunset is, but this ship seems to be able to find it. So we are hopefully going to follow it off. And it turns out sunsets are boring, so we're just going to go ahead, jump over here, land, and we're going to be accidentally hitting this trigger. So we're not getting the full extent of this skip, but that's perfectly okay. You still get to see this very beautiful Kaminoan sunset, as you can see here. And then eventually, there's going to be a platform that shows up. Hey, look, it's here. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay. Throw these TIE Fighters into this pillar that will get us set up to go into the next section of this level. We're actually getting close to the end of this level. We just have to throw this pillar, throw these TIE Fighters into this pillar, crushing this ATST, sending a bunch of guys out for a swim. 
and then we are going to dash over to the end of the level where i'm going to give a brief little headphone warning audio balancing is not this game's strong suit so we are going to activate our force rage ability here which is going to make us do a whole lot of extra damage and give us infinite force you can see that meter down at the bottom left corner that's all sparkly and force and all of that kind of stuff um you see that all glowing and doing its whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's really pretty and stuff, but we just want to go and utilize it to take out all of these enemies quickly using the power of the dark side of the force and anger. And that will then go and end our first level, Camino the Escape. So yeah, and with each uh, the glories of this game is there are technically they're skippable cutscenes, but they mask our loading screens. So if you play on PC, all of this stuff is paused for the timer, but uh, on Xbox, it's obviously not because you we don't currently have a load remover for the console port. So in our second level, we are in um, the uh kato nemoida the eastern arc we are going to go and rescue our old jedi mentor we are first going to get shot in the face with a missile which is just going to allow us to skip over this bridge and start zapping this walker that for some reason doesn't really know how to react to his zapping it which is perfectly fine and this uh, Walker is going to get destroyed, and then we are going to come over here, and we are going to then take these uh, Sith Acolytes and yeet them off the edge. No force necessary, just some good old-fashioned yeeting. Well, this guy's going to get force yeet because he decided to bounce up in the air, but that's okay. It was a personality decision on his end. And now we have our next skip coming up here. Once this door opens, we are going to dash over to a specific spot where we are once again going to suspend ourselves in the air by doing a dash, two airstrikes, and then we hold force lightning. Once we get blasted in the face with a missile, we can then uh, reset our jumps and get us exactly where we need to be skipping a small little platform puzzle. We're going to go a little bit out of our way here to grab this experience point, Holocron. It is very necessary for uh, the upgrades that we are going to be taking. It's just slightly out of the way, uh, but that's okay. We kind of want to take at least a few detours so that we can do things quickly. Star Killer is going to have a little headache here, and that's going to remind him, oh yeah, I can throw my lightsabers. He didn't know that he could do that before his headache came in. Um, don't worry about why. You know, Everybody has headaches, and for him, that just made him think, oh hey, throwing my lightsaber is a thing that I can do. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump around this corner that I don't think the game wanted you to be able to jump around but they didn't make the shield far enough no biggie whatsoever so in kato nemoida the name of the game is that damage jump reset that we saw when i said slapping our face against the shield we do that a lot in this level we just slap our face against the shield and it allows us to jump around corners that normally the game would want us to wait and take out all of the enemies and then go and then take the shield out using the power of the force but we decided that slapping ourselves in the face with a shield was much much more efficient and we're going to come over here take out all of these guys here quickly just doing all of our different abilities or quick little zappy zaps because you know zappy zaps are smart um we're going to throw our lightsabers at this walker and then pick up this little explosive here that's going to take out one walker and then i'm going to come over here so that way these stormtroopers don't get in my way and do the same thing once those walkers are destroyed we are going to reset checkpoint and what this does is this is going to, um, for some reason, there's going to be an elevator door that opens, spawning in more enemies. Now, normally, in, um, in the game, once you take out these walkers, the elevator door will open, and but you won't be able to actually go into the elevator. But once you destroy the walkers and you reset the checkpoint, the elevator goes up. I don't know why the developers decided to make that a thing. I personally will not complain because it does save another good chunk of time and takes out less, makes it where we have less enemies that we are going to have to fight. So now we are going to go here where this ship is going to chase us. This ship is going to be our nemesis throughout Kato Nemoida. It is going to not want us to do anything that we are going to want to do. But thankfully, with the power of dash canceling, we can outrun everything, which Really, you don't even need dash canceling to do this. You just need to be able to dash. But, you know, dash canceling is faster. So we're going to do it. It's going to be great. 
And now, once we do this, another epic slow motion flip into a superhero landing, we have our next skip of the run coming up. This is going to be Casino Skip. Uh, this is one of those sections where we're going to be seeing things uh, that is going to be where the walls in this are going to be kind of a suggestion. So we're going to come over here. We're going to just drop through this wall and get out of bounds. Then we're going to jump around some invisible walls here. And if I drop just right, perfect, we hit that checkpoint, and that's going to be a beautiful casino skip. It's exactly how you want to do that. That actually was probably one of the cleanest casino skips I have ever had. Um, and also, I do see you guys' messages in chat. Um, speaking of learning the speed run, I actually did make the most up-to-date any percent tutorial. So if you are interested in learning that run, it is linked on speedrun.com so you guys can learn this run for yourself. So... We're going to now dash a little over here and get to this a very, very obnoxious door. Um, so this door here, this little carbonite droid is going to freeze this door and we have to break it. Now, obviously, enemies are going to be getting in the way. So I'm going to try and position myself in a very specific spot to be able to force push this door without enemies being annoying. Put myself right here, force that, get a little stunned, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to do something a little fun for all of you viewers at home. We are going to go and we're going to break this casino and pick up this holocron. That will be a surprise tool that you will get to see later at the end of the game. Then we're just going to dash all the way here. And we are going to get onto this ship here, which is where we will start our first auto-scroller of the run. We've gone... 15, 14 minutes of just non-stop action and this is the first sort of little break that you will be getting the only real area to it is you just have to zap these tie fighters as they come at you really easy to do because the game has auto locking and for some reason one zap of lightning takes out three tie fighters so if you have any tie fighter need tie fighter pest problems call the exterminators who have lightning because i guess that's what gets rid of it and now I'm going to take this a little bit to take a little drink of water. Hydration is important, especially when you are giving encyclopedic knowledge like you are right now. I try. This is one of my favorite speed games. Um, this was probably the one of the games that I definitely like had the grind for to get world record and to get where I am. So I, I am very, very passionate about this speed game. So we're just going to, again, this ship, like I said, he's very annoying. He's going to be chasing us, uh, but we can just, you know, block and deflect his missiles back at him. So obviously the more missiles we can deflect back, the more damage that we do. So we just have to keep blocking all of these missiles, and then we are going to be ending this level. He's going to maybe disappear. Oh, I thought maybe we hit it, but I guess we did not hit the end. But it's fine. We're just gonna block, do all these blocks. As you can see, Star Killer, he's, uh, he's kind of a pro at fighting this ship, and this ship doesn't really seem to understand the concept of um, like changing up his plan, but, you know, it's fine. We won't question the ship's decisions. So that ends Kato Nomoida, the Eastern arc and now we are going to move to the western arc because you know in order to save your old jedi mentor friend you have to get through two arcs we're going to pick up our uh, second experience point holocron and we are going to um get our first upgrade of lightsaber throw again that will help us out later and we are going to do once again the classic of slapping our face against a shield to skip that little fight we're going to jump over here do this really large bridge skip we just need to have these snipers shoot us in the face, and that will then reset our jump, allowing us to skip around this platform once again. And then we're going to have another instance of slapping our face into his shield, and then we're going to be setting ourselves up for the next major skip in this run. This is going to be Big Bridge Skip. So this is going to be an instance where when we reload a checkpoint, the game is going to set itself in a different state than when we first entered this area. So by switching costumes, I'm going to be reloading this checkpoint, and I need to hold my control sticks at a couple of different specific angles. And I'm going to kind of focus up so you guys can see this. But if everything goes properly, we're going to hitch a ride on... Oh, 
going to mess that up a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and reload, give it another shot. Uh, but if all things go properly, we are going to be able to um, uh, skip across this entire bridge, and it, which is most of this level. Okay, so we're on ship number one. Jump across to ship number two. I barely made that. That was a little on the spooky side. But we're great. We're going to do this. Oh, no. Oh, I made that. I don't know how we made that. That was crazy. <laughs> I thought I was stuck, and I thought I was falling to my doom. But we're good. We're going to reload checkpoint here so the game understands what the heck we just did. And then we are going to be good to go. So... That was Big Bridge Skip, and now we're going to get a beautiful amount of lag. Oh, this game loves it. That Just is really bad lag. <laughs> yeah, that one, that's the worst section of lag in this entire game. Um, so, yeah, this ship is going to try and shoot us. We're just dashing. The game wants you to use cover. Uh, we're just going to swag on him and uh, dash back and forth, and he won't hit us. So nothing we really have to worry about. And then we're going to throw these missiles at this ship. Uh, sometimes the Force Yeet doesn't always want to do what it, like, follow the direction that you tell it to which is fine it's not that big of a deal it just kind of makes you look a little on the goofy side and then we're going to chuck this ship into this pillar here and it's fine it sustained multiple missiles worth of damage but it does not care it is going to continue to try and beat us up but once again we can dash back and forth we're still not going to let this guy beat us up Another quick lightsaber throw, and once again, we are looking pretty golden. We just take this, throw more missiles at it, reflect as they come through. The more missiles we hit, the faster this section goes. Or this might just be a slight auto-scroller. I honestly don't know. One more big yeet, and this ship is finally taken down. And we're going to take one more little hop little skippity jump to get over to the arena so you guys are probably wondering what the heck are we even doing at this planet um so star killer he's currently trying to find his waifu uh and he believes that the best way to find his waifu is to track down his uh jedi mentor rom coda who survived from the first game and is now um he's cat who got captured on some sort of a uh, mission from the Rebellion and is now here. And so we are just going to jump. Well, we're jumping right now because we're happy to see our Jedi Mentor, but also this allows us to hit the trigger for the level just slightly earlier than when we would normally hit it. So now we are in Tarkose Arena, where we are going to have our first big boss fight. This is another area where the run kind of does slow down a little bit. Um, so it basically is, this boss is put into three phases. Each phase has, each of the three big phases has two small phases. So in total, that's a lot of phases. So we're just going to start off by zapping this guy in the face. Uh, this is going to make him slam his hands on the ground, and then we zap his hands, and it allows us to then force push his shackles. We have to do this twice to then trigger a quick time event. And then uh, once we do the quick time event, we're going to do a lot of damage to our Gorog here, and then we will uh, be able to then set up for the next phase. So... Um, we're just, again, we're getting a lot of damage off, trying to zap as much as we can, and you're probably wondering, all right, you're using a lot of force, and I do see that you have a force meter. What sort of infinite force hacks are you using? And the answer would be none. This game has made it so easy to manage your force, whereas, like, in the first game, you kind of run out of force really, really quickly. Like, even if you've put, like, hundred of hours and you're in this, like, New Game Plus file, then you will go through force very quickly in the first game. In this one, it basically is next to impossible to um, run out of force. Like, unless you're just sitting there and suspending lightning forever and just holding the button, you won't run out of force really at all. Which is really nice, because it makes it where it's something that we don't have to keep managing throughout the run. And yes... Uh, Sometimes you'll see me mashing my lightning button. Other times you'll see me hold the button. 
that purely is just because it's something I kind of feel like doing at the current state and time. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason to why sometimes I mash and sometimes I don't. Except for, like, obviously here where, you know, the game tells you to mash. This is a game that if you uh, struggle with mashing, it might be a little difficult because this game does have a fair amount of it. This was the game that taught me that mashing a button is actually a skill. This and a uh, Pokey Pommel from Mario Party 7. So if you guys have any other questions in chat about this run or about me, feel free to ask them. I, especially during this level, this is a great time to be able to ask questions oh also the game tells you to hold right trigger yeah that's a suggestion as long as you push it initially it doesn't matter it's fine i'm gonna get another quick drink of water here All right, now we just have one quick little quick time event here. This will end this first phase. The first major phase. So we're gonna stab this poor Gorog right in the boo-boo. Um, we're literally pulling up a like metal bandage for this like gash in his head just to stab it. Um, yeah, the guy's kinda, is kinda, Sarkin is kinda mean. Um, you know, it, it's kind of mean. What's my favorite part of this game to speedrun? I would have to say my favorite part of this game to speedrun is that Kato Nomoida, the last two levels that we just did. Um, the damage boosting is super fun. The tricks are great. And you're con like, I mean, you just saw it. it was just constant one thing after another. It just did not stop. And yes, it is interesting looking water. I have a uh, sparkling water because I... I'm weird, I don't really like the the feeling of regular water in my mouth, so I drink sparkling water all the time. Random facts about the guy in stream you probably weren't expecting to learn. Also, I just want to say hi, Rubito. Thank you for the good luck on the run. Rubito is a wonderful member of my community a mod in my chat as well as a phenomenal speedrunner for the lord of the rings the return of the king a lot of the modern day strats for the new game plus category were developed by her so yeah she's great All right, so yeah, this section of this fight is very RNG heavy. Oh, that's more lag. Wow, hello. Um, wow, that's laggier than that normally is, but hey, it's fine. So um, yeah, with those damage boosts and stuff, they're, they seem very, very difficult to pull off at first, but with a little bit of practice, it honestly what, like isn't too difficult to get the... Um, to get the feeling down, as long as you understand that once you slap your face into the shield, basically what you're looking for with those damage boosts is when Star Killer is um, like uh, when he like gets like the knockback animation. As long as you're seeing that knockback animation, then he then you know that you're doing the damage boost. Okay, this guy needs to go away. And did I get hit? I did. This is. Ooh. I'm getting kind of bullied here. But it's fine. We got our lightsaber stuck into this guy's face, and that's that. That's the part that matters. Oh, that's why we upgraded our um, uh, lightsaber throw earlier in the run, is because then it allows us to do more damage to the Gorog here on a fully charged lightsaber throw, and it makes this part go by faster. Fun little things here. One of the things that is really cool about this run is we have um, uh, like figured out what are really the key upgrades 
So there really are not a lot of upgrades that we will be getting during this run. It's mostly just getting the um, like very key upgrades. We're getting we get a lightsaber throw upgrade, a lightsaber damage upgrade, and a mind trick upgrade. Those are all of the main things that we will be getting. The, and that's that's it. As long as you know to get those three upgrades and you know when to get them, you'll know what to do. So, poor Baron Tarko here. He's going to get eaten by the Gorog. Later, dude. Um, and now, Koda is going to get grabbed. Apparently, his activated lightsaber doesn't affect the Gorog's hand. I'm not going to question it, um, in that I question it all the time. And we are now going to start chasing after Koda. And um, don't worry, this camera is normal for me. Um, I always get this really weird broken camera, so I hope you guys also enjoy a beautiful Kato Nemoidan sunset. Um, I don't even think there actually is a sunset. Um, you can just see these rocks that are in the background that probably should not be in the background at this point, but it's fine. So, ooh, again, this is the third and final phase of this fight. We are just going to now dash, because, you know, dashing is fast. And we have to alternate between throwing our lightsaber and shooting lightning. While our lightsabers are out in the air, we will then be shooting lightning onto the Gorog. And we have to kind of be very careful with our movement, because we don't want to get hit by the Gorog, because then we have to, like, do a backflip first. Um, because, you know, doing a backflip is how you recover from getting whacked by a beast that is, uh, that makes Rancors look small. So, yeah. And we are almost finishing up here. Uh, for some reason, Starkiller is going to do this all again. And this guy is still just going to refuse to die. So... By refusing to die, what we are going to do is Starkiller is going to decide to turn himself into a Force Torpedo. Which I don't know if any of you guys ever thought to use this before. But yes, he's going to surround himself in Force Energy, basically let out his own anime protagonist scream, charge down, impale himself through the stomach of the Gorog, and saving Koda. Why he didn't do that right away, I don't know. But again... I'm not Star Killer. I'm not gonna question it. I'm just that random guy who plays this video game fast. So we're not gonna question things too much in this game. But now we have rescued Coda, and Coda is basically trying to tell us, yo, dude, you're not a clone. And Star Killer's like, bro, I don't know. And Coda says something about wandering the swamps of Dagobah. So rather than go looking for a waifu, we are going to go wander the swamps of Dagobah and go on a beautiful journey to try and discover ourselves. Now, as you all know from Dagobah, weird things happen in Dagobah, but this is going to be a very difficult level. I'm going to have to focus up pretty hard here while I get, um, get through this level. So just going to see how this, just see what happens here going to jump on the ship dash over here and that's Dagobah whoo very like I said who that is a that is a very very difficult level <laughs> oh hey look Yoda's there by the way oh. the Alliance leader and so now uh Starkiller has still not decided whether or, or not he is actually a clone, but he's decided it's time to um, go and be with his waifu again. He wants to rejoin the woman that he loves. And in order to do that, he goes and picks up Koda again, and they are going to make his way, make their way to go see his waifu. Um, in which Koda's like, yo, you need to like tell her that it's you. And he's like, bro, I don't know, I'm a clone. And they're basically like having a thing. Um, they're having a like teacher student moment. And then Star Killer's like, yo, you know how you wanted to like blow up Kimino? Well, here, I have this thing that you can do it. And I didn't give it to you earlier. But again, I'm not questioning Star Killer's decisions. So this ship that we are on is the Salvation. <laughs> Basically, uh, the Salvation is Juno's ship that she uh, 
is the captain of. And she also, uh, oh, also Starkiller had a vision that uh, Juno gets like kidnapped and that's why he's here. He feels like he has to save her. I don't know exactly, but for some reason he doesn't just like, you know, call her. He's just, is like, no, I'm gonna go. And now, well, the Imperials are here. So now that we're back into the high intensity speedrunning action after that quick unskippable cutscene, we have another unskippable cutscene. Uh, if you played the first game, you remember our robot Proxy. Yeah, he uh, supposedly died at the first game by the hands of actually Starkiller. Um, but look, he's here. He's alive for some reason. He's back. Um, and which they don't really explain it. Um, they start talking about it and Starkiller is just like, okay, cool. Where's my waifu? Um, so now we are going to go and <laughs> rescue the waifu. Um, you know, plot really is not something that they think about too much in this game, but again, it's fine. Plot's not really important in a speedrun. Um, oh, hi, Boba Fett. I guess, you know, that's not foreshadowing at all. Um, so we're in the last chunk of levels we have been having a lot of skips just back to back to back to back to back this is going to basically kind of really change that vibe we're not going to be having nearly as many skips in the run as much as we are going to be having a lot more just moments of movement so we are going this is where we shift to really just focus on making sure that we're taking all of our tight corners doing all that good stuff optimizing every possible thing that we can so we are going to force dash over here get uh grabbed by a spider which is not the best thing in the world but it's fine because these spiders are going to have to be all taken out anyways so whether we do it before or after we put this this thing the little door generator in its place doesn't really matter too much All right, so there's going to be a bunch of spiders, and once again, Starkiller is going to have another headache. It's been a while since his last headache, I know, but this headache is going to remind him that he can use Force Repulse, which is basically Force Push in all directions. Why other Jedi don't think that that's a good idea? Again, beyond me, but Starkiller, I guess, just has a bigger brain than, like, most other Jedi. So we're going to have our cute little elevator ride here. Nothing really too crazy. This is like the calm before the storm of movement and enemies. So before we haven't really had too many issues with uh, enemies in this game, it is going to be very different in this section now. Hi, Mr. Rebel person, your body is getting in the way. Um, but uh, there's going to be a lot of enemies. And if you are familiar, I've ran the PC port on GDQ Hotfix before. Uh, I'm not running the PC port right now because I have yet to be able to get it to work since upgrading my graphics card. Uh, so I'm running the Xbox version. Well, on the PC version, if you go too fast, things just won't spawn. Which for a speed run is great because you don't have a lot of enemies you got to deal with. That's not the case on the Xbox version. So enemy, any enemies that spawn will follow us throughout the entire level, which can make areas very, very scary because in the PC version right now, these terror troopers, they just wouldn't spawn. Obviously they're spawned, they're here, that's not great, but we have to do our best to ignore them. And it's not always the easiest thing to do because these terror troopers can teleport, they can do all kinds of different things to get in our way. And obviously, the only good way to try and counter it is to either kill them or just go faster. Which isn't always the easiest thing in the world when you are limited by game mechanics or why you can't go fast. Also, here's Boba Fett. He apparently is hired to uh, kidnap our waifu. Like I said, definitely was not foreshadowed earlier in the level. Alright, so hopefully I can do this. I'm just going to do a couple force repulses here to try and get these enemies away. Yep, okay. So this is an unfortunate side effect from running on the Xbox version, is these enemies will very much get in our way, and so we have to kill them. Which is very unfortunate, but also it just kind of, you know, is what it is. Um, but... You know, we just take them out quickly. It's not that difficult to take them out, thankfully. Oh, I got a little unlucky there, but thankfully we can still just do this. 
That guy's dead. I think that at least should. Oh nope, there's still more. I'm not too. I'm not worried as much about the spiders because as long as the spider. Oh, there, there's so many of these terror troopers. Holy cow! Why are there so many of them? I am not familiar with why there's so many. Okay, but we have enough now. They're gone. We can open the door and we can move. All right, so we're going to dash into here and do some platforming. Uh, we're going to... Uh, oh, we're going to do a very specific dash here so that way we die in this cutscene because then that skips the cutscene. Because this is a weird death area where for some reason the game doesn't register you as dead, it just teleports you back to the other area without causing you to go through a load screen, making it a fast death, which is nice to have. All right, so now we are here into engine room skips. This is where there are a bunch of little minor skips we are going to be doing, which if we shove ourselves in the middle here, oh, we're gonna, I guess, ping pong back and forth a little bit, and then the game's gonna behave, so. Also, this thing. You would think, oh, you can't squeeze through that. Yeah, we can. Oop. That was a little spooky there. Got a little, like, stuck. We can just thread some of these needles, which is really nice. And then we're gonna sneak or try and... Maybe. Oh, come on. Get through. There you go. Good job, Starkiller. We're going to wait this cycle out, and then we're going to have a very, 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 very difficult jump coming up here that I hope I'm able to get. I've been pretty good at getting it, so I hopefully didn't just jinx myself. And I didn't. We're all seti spaghetti. And now we just have a beautiful little elevator ride. We're going to go back to the hangar, and that's going to be the end of the movement area of this level. And then we just have to go into our boss fight. Which our boss fight is, um, you know, those big holes in the wall that we ran through? Yeah, obviously something caused that. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to fight that thing. Um, because that is trying to blow our ship up and our waifu escaped. So, um, we obviously are sad that our waifu has escaped and we don't want our waifu to completely get away from us. So we are going to do what we can to try and get her back. Yes, I know, but he will be expecting the entire rebel fleet. my thoughts as well. See, there's the big droid. He's sneaking away. And then we're going to quick switch costumes, and with those costumes getting switched, that will then um, skip the cutscene here and get us into this boss fight quicker. Um, Sarge, just so you know, I was using wireless earbuds uh, for Discord because my disc uh, monitors don't let me have Discord up on my computer, and my wireless earbuds just died. So, okay, so <laughs> that's fun. You can hear me now. So for this fight. Um, I am going to be lifting these pylons up here in the air, and we're going to be trying to manipulate our terror walker here to go in a specific direction. Um, but we want to, we can't go too fast. Oh, come on. Because we don't want the terror walker to turn around too early. No, that droid jumped on me and gave me a hug when I did not want a hug. Because uh, if we go too quickly, through these energy pylons, then the um, droid will turn around and will get in the way of this last pylon. Now, obviously, we just took him out, so we don't have to work. Now, since we did that part correctly, then we're fine. Um, but we're just going to pick this little box up, throw it at our terror walker, and we're going to now just start beating the absolute schnoz out of this guy doing three hits, and then I do a lightning strike with my lightsaber combo. That is just to make it where um, any enemies that gather around me, they will either get taken out or they will, like, dodge. And so that's something that is really nice. Oh, oh, wow, okay, that, like, generator thing went to where I needed it to go. So that is phenomenal. 
So we are going to now just continue to move through here, trying to get all of these big honking generators back in their place. Put that in, which is great. And now we got the shield taken out again. Gonna, He's going to vibrate a little bit because uh, apparently you vibrate when your shields get taken out. I've never had any shields of mine taken out, so I don't think about it too much. All right, go over here, throw another explosion at this guy. And now we can then start beating the, the tar out of this guy again. Oh, come on. Two, three, lightning, one, two, th oh. Two, three, lightning, and we're gonna jump on this guy here. Fun little moments there, and we're going to jump into this generator here, activate it, and while we're activating that, we're going to get our saber damage upgrade. Normally, you would want to get it before the fight. I guess I missed a holocron somewhere. I don't exactly know where I missed it, but it's fine. The droid's going to fly backwards in a little bit of pain, but again, nothing. That's going to wrap up our second boss fight. Probably my favorite boss fight in the entire game, mainly because he um, doesn't have, like, it's it's faster. Whereas the other boss fights kind of tend to drag a little bit. This one's nice and quick. So, now that we have just done Aboard the Salvation, now we are going to do the battle for the Salvation. We've convinced Coda to disappear and go to fight our waifu, or to go to Kamino, so that way we can get our waifu back from Darth Vader. But what we have to do first is we have to do the level we just did, but backwards. So we're going to first clear this hangar and then get back up to the bridge to get, um, to save our waifu. Now, for some reason, you know, I don't remember in any point in time where there were other Sith. I know, like, Starkiller himself is already a breach of canon, but there's, like, a bunch of these guys. And I don't know exactly, like, why they're there or what it is. I'm not going to question it because, you know, um, it. it I, I've stopped questioning the plot in this game because I've learned that questioning the plot sometimes just like ruins fun and I like fun. Oh, and we're getting bad unlucky lasers from our big boy here. I don't know what caused that Sith guy to like fall over and die, but I'm not gonna question it too much. I, I guess, you know, questioning this game just doesn't work. So just don't, don't do it. Don't question your video games, chat. Or do, I mean, I don't make your decisions for you. Throw that. Oops, that was an awkward throw, but that's fine. Chuck our lightsabers again. And these are the big, uh, you know, hangar doors. Uh, how do we get rid of them? We zap them. We don't grip them because, you know, that would be silly and practical. But if we zap them, then they go away. Again, I don't make the rules. I'm just, I'm just the guy who plays the game fast, and I'm not going to question it too much. And now it is time for more engine room skits. We are going to pop into here again, and we are going to once again wedge our way through this little bit of energy. Now, for some reason, oh boy. All right, I'm a little nervous for my health here. So we're just gonna play this a little safe, and we're gonna do that the way the game like wants us to do it, because on the Xbox version, some of those engine room skips just don't want to work so like obviously you know you don't want to uh have them be a problem where you like die 
because I have ping ponged enough where these engine room skips have just killed me. But, you know, we actually made it through a lot of these pretty nicely. I just need to squeeze through this last one. And we're going to come over here. All right, so we have a big, big fight coming up. Okay, and as you can see, when we have big fights, we have our force rage meter. So we're gonna get angry, we're gonna drop down, we're gonna explode, and we're gonna just keep exploding. We're gonna explode like five or six times, and the fight's just gonna end. Why that happens, um, we don't know. Uh, actually, no, we do know. We kill the enemies faster than they all spawn. And by killing the enemies faster than when they all spawn, um, then the uh, game will just assume that you finish the fight. And then we'll just... Oh, okay, that guy just decided he wanted to block my horse grip, which I mean, like, you know, he can do what he wants, but... Um, but when you, you know, defeat the enemies faster than they... Oh, it's bad! I'm falling. And then, um... Uh, wow, I have lost all train of thought here, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, if you defeat the enemies faster than they all can spawn, then you don't have to worry about them because, you know, the game is just like, all right, there's no enemies. Boom, you're done. So now this is where this level can get really, really rough because we have to put these generators in um, but, you know, on the PC version, we wouldn't have to worry about enemies nearly as much. On this version, enemies become a problem. Oh, I do not want to pick up your shield. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to just steal it and throw it back at you, but we did. And I'm just going to apologize for the actions that I have committed here. And I'm just going to leave. So you can see the enemies follow you from room to room, which makes... This is where this level becomes a lot more rough on the Xbox version because you have all of these enemies. On PC, you would go so fast that they just don't spawn in, thus making this section much less hectic and less laggy. Ouch. Going to... Ow. Um, yep, ow. Go away. Please. Be nice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't get stuck. That is the only... Oh, oh, hey. That was rude. We're good. Oh, my capture card did its thing. I will fix in just a second. We're back. Looks bad, Coda. Apologies for that. My capture card decided on this last week that um, it wanted to just randomly have moments where it froze. So. I have to. I literally just have to go into OBS and deactivate and reactivate it, and it's fine. I'm just going to throw that guy, get him out of here. Now we have this final little generator doohickey mcthingy me jigger. Um, ouch. Then this droid. No, don't get my doohickey stuck. Please. I need my doohickey. Ouch. Ouch. I'm throwing the nude that way because I need to move this. 
see and again like i said on the pc version none of this would be nearly as relevant but it still works fine kind of adds like a slightly different flair Um, I don't know yet. It started doing it, like, recently, and I haven't uploaded any runs where it's had that issue. So I guess if I do PB this run, we will find out. Chuck that. I'm gonna throw this box. Missed my actual target with it, but that's okay. That happens. Throw that to knock that guy down. Direct hit! Gone! The main cannon is offline. We're dead in the water without it! And then we go through, do all the zaps to uh, up. <laughs> yeah, so this is the main cannon. Why we didn't think to just Fire this immediately? I don't know. But, boom. That gets rid of that. Again, why I didn't fire it initially is beyond me. Gonna ride up this elevator here. And by being up in this elevator, this is going to carry us to our little tram. And then we have this little tram here where there's going to be lots of bugs. More more spiders. And we're just going to force explode. And by force exploding, the spiders go away. And like I said, force management, not really anything that we have to worry about. All right, I'm just going to do a quick reactivate on my capture card here as we get into the last level. Oop. It's a straight shot to the planet below, but you'll need All right, to so here we are going into um, back to Camino. So um, this is going to be a great section in this run because uh, this is also another one of my favorite levels. There are a lot of really, 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 really cool tricks that you're going to be seeing. The coolest and the most difficult trick in the entire run is actually going to be coming up in this level pretty quickly. So definitely get excited for it because I am excited for it. It's going to be great to show off to you guys. Um, but anyway, we are going to be here. We have to go through this quick time event and our final little auto scroller of the run. Um, and it, once we do that, we are then going to, once again, be right in the heat of this run. So, Starkiller is back. He's here with the Rebellion. He's going to crash a big ship into Kamino to make the shield go down on the planetary shield. And in order to do that, he's crashing the main ship into the planet. And uh, this is what he will do for his waifu. So do not underestimate what Starkiller will do for love. Because for him, he will crash a ship into a planet for love. And then I ask all of you guys a question, chat. What are you willing to do for love? That was probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in a marathon-style run. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying this run so far. This has been an absolute blast. This is, again, one of my favorite games to speedrun. I absolutely love it. Um, I really hope you guys consider picking this up. It is a great run. Um, and 
it's super fun it's super easy to get into uh and i want more people to speed run this game it is one of my favorite games to run i i know i've said that multiple times uh, so yes um speed run my video game run my speed game as i've heard many people say and if you guys have been enjoying this run, go ahead and uh, please do follow me on Twitch. Um, I have, oddly enough, I have a really chill stream vibe, which is really funny because on marathon runs, I'm very high energy. Um, I have had some pretty high energy streams, though, so I'm totally down for high energy streams if that's what people are wanting. Um, and also, for those who have been watching, um, I also do freelance esports shoutcasting. So if any of you guys are into our esports tournament organizers or anything like that and need a hype shoutcaster, hit me up. I'd love to be able to help you guys out. I love shoutcasting for esports and it's super fun. So, yeah. Um, also, this is also what happens if you take Starkiller's waifu. He will take a TIE Fighter by hand and he will throw it. Why? Because he's just mad. Also, superhero landing. Alright, so this is where mashing becomes a skill. We have to move that debris very, very quickly. And if we don't mash it enough, then the, these turrets will shoot us. But if we mash it enough, we'll get shot while the force is still doing its thing, and we open it up, thus saving a lot of time. But we're not done yet. That wasn't even the skip that we're talking about. We're actually going to go into the skip that we're talking about right now. So we talked about those damage boosts where we're slapping our face into shields. Um, now we're going to get shot by snipers a bunch. They're going to carry us out of bounds. Once we get out of bounds, we have to dash in a very specific path to avoid getting stuck and to avoid falling through the world. Um, and then this will allow us to skip a whole major section of fights. So we're going to start off by doing another two strike and lightning to keep this whole chain going. I think I'm good, but I'm going to play it safe and just get shot one more. Okay, yeah, I was definitely fine, but that's okay. We're out of bounds now. And we're going to run through here. Ignore the fact that there is no floor. And we're through. Beautiful first try. That skip is a lot harder than it looks, chat. I'm not just saying that to make myself look cool. That strat can have so many ways that it can go wrong. So to get that first try at this... Uh, at on hotfix here is always a wonderful feeling that skip by the way probably oh boy well that was a goofy way to just fall and die um <laughs> but hey it's fine the just slightly missed inputs to skip a corner making you fall and it, 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 it just it, it happens thankfully we're right here and oh look all the enemies despawned ouch All right, so now we're here. We're going to steal this guy's shield and throw it in his face because Starkiller is just mean. And then we're going to force explode a bunch. There are droids that are spawning. You can see them over here. But as they spawn, as long as we are force exploding, they die. So we just keep doing this until Coda starts talking. Come on, Coda. Oh, there we go. All right, now we're here. We're going to pick up our last upgrade and grab a mind trick upgrade. 
And you're probably like, um, streamer, why are you picking up a mind trick upgrade? You've literally never used mind trick except for when the game forced you to. Um, like I said, it's an important tool that will be explained later. Um, so we will talk about that once we get into the last fight. Now we have some really difficult platforming. I need to kind of hard focus, so stand by as I try to not die. Strong in the force. What are you talking about? He's cloned an army. That's impossible. That's. We're on our way. Okay, that is a good first chunk of platforming. We are not out of the woods yet. We have to just yeet these guys away. Uh, we yeet these guys because they will not let us open up this door. No matter what. So we're going to open this door, we're going to dash cancel a bunch here, and hopefully I can get this door open, and we're golden. That door has killed runs before, so I'm very happy to not have to have that happen. Somewhere. The original star killer. We don't know what you're looking at yet. I told you, no one can clone a Jedi. Alright, so we're just going to jump across all these platforms. Whoa. Scary. Jump on this little test tube here to get up here. Pull that door open and we are golden through here. And that is going to complete the last little bit of platforming. So now we just have to get into our last run. Um, so it's great. We're looking great. And things are going to get a little spooky. Uh, here, the game is going to decide to force us to walk. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but also it's, you know, got to set the stage. Get the spooky parts. As uh, Starkiller's headaches are going to come back. I know it's been a while since he's had a good headache. So, we're going to have him have a lot of headaches here. But first, Darth Vader is going to appear out of nowhere and give us some really weird lightsaber physics. First, he's gonna headbutt us. I wonder if that's where the headaches come from. Because, you know, getting headbutted by Darth Vader, I'm sure would give a lot of people headaches. Alright, so we're getting real close here to getting... We're, we're so... We're, we just want to get our waifu back. You know, that's the whole goal of this entire game. Is for Starkiller to get his waifu back. We're gonna do all of these... Uh, lightsaber locks. Hitting Vader. Leading us to another headache. Unfortunately, we will not be doing the Endor DLC as a run. I want to shout out a runner, um, Pricey But Icy. He is one of the best runners of this game. Um, he came in and just cleaned out my any percent new game plus records. Um, and uh, he did do a speed run of the Endor DLC. So if you're interested in checking that out, I highly recommend it. That's one more headache before we get into fighting Darth Vader. All right, so you guys remember that holocron that I picked up back in Cato Nemoida in the Eastern Arc 
at the very end of the level that I said would be a special surprise tool to be used later. I know you guys don't remember it. It's okay. I only remember it because it is my entire gag. But we're going to show... I want to tell you guys what it is. So, for some reason, there. I think it's a game. I don't know if it's a game or if it's a show. But there is this wonderful character that I still don't know what it is named Guybrush Threepwood that the developers of this game created to put into this video game. So what we're going to be showing off is once we hit this very specific cutscene, you will see it because we have to do one final costume change to skip a cutscene. We are going to be changing into the man, the myth, the legend, Guybrush Threep Killer. So if you couldn't take the plot seriously for this game before, oh boy, you will not be able to take it seriously now. So we pull this, this cutscene happens, we're going to menu all the way over here, and we are going to activate Guybrush Threep Killer. He's wonderful. He is a beautiful individual and it is going to ruin the experience of anything serious in this video game but just look at him he's great welcome guybrush Threep killer you look so good you've never looked better also his lightsabers don't fit on his sides Don't question it, chat. I swear it is completely normal. So we're going to be keeping uh, Vader kind of stun locked here by doing a three hit combo like this, zapping him, and then we zap his lightsaber so that way he's kind of like in this blocking animation. We do enough of those combos, then he spawns in his zombies. And by doing that, he spawns in his zombies and now we can then start doing... Oh, oh boy. Zombies are not behaving. They never really do. As long as I have enough, that's not enough distance. Now that is. Perfect. Our final headache of the game. Or no, I think we have one more headache. But you don't really, like, notice it as a headache. So, it's... Yeah, it's fine. So, oh, he is... Vader is just going to absolutely snort me. Woo! Don't spook me like that, man. All right. So this is the zombie phase for the Vader fight. We are going to be jumping across and fighting Vader while he spawns in a army of zombies. And to deal with these zombies... Oh, come on. We're going to be mind-tricking these zombies to fight and distract Vader. This is why we get the one mind-trick upgrade that we do. Because it makes the zombies fight each other and it makes Vader not focus on us. And when Vader is not focused on us, we can then just hit him without any worries whatsoever. Because what we need is we need to be able to do a lot of damage to Vader, but also not initiate a lightsaber lock. Because if we get a lightsaber lock, then um, we will be losing a lot of time. And it is very easy to lose runs to this fight because Vader will give you lightsaber locks. But as long as you keep him staggered just enough and keep his focus on the zombies, you shouldn't get a lock. Now, I don't want to jinx myself. But, you know, things can still get a oop like that. This is a weird phase. Come on, Vader. Just jump. Okay, there we go. He is jumped. He took a little longer to jump than I wanted him to, but that is okay. Force those zombies. Ah, did it again. Deactivate and reactivate. Thank you for saying something, chat, because I would have not noticed. Alright, 
destroy him. Come on. There we go. We're very close to finishing this fight here. And jump there, and that ends that. And I'm just gonna let you guys just enjoy Guybrush Reapwood here. Because it's pretty gorgeous. And I also do need some water. I also just realized I haven't eaten dinner yet. It's sparkling water. Don't don't you guys quote me do that quote unquote water. It says right here on the can, sparkling water. I will do your bidding. Just let her go. Where are his eyeballs? Find and kill General Kota. If you refuse, the woman dies. You will return to me and give yourself to the dark side. If you resist, she dies. And when your training is complete, you will hunt down and execute the rebel leaders. If you fail, she dies. No. Well, goodbye, waifu. She just got thrown out the window. And that made Guybrush very upset. So now we are into the final phase of Vader. And how we are going to be fighting him is... Remember how I said in the last phase that we didn't want a saber lock? Well, on this phase, we do. But we want our lock to be in a very specific spot. We want to shove him back over by this pole. By keeping him... Oh, hello? Quick time event? Thank you. If we keep him over by this pole, which is exactly where we have him right now... Death gives you strength. Embrace it. I will tell you! If you wish to join the woman, so be it. What we're gonna do is shove him up against this pole, and if we mash Y, his health goes... Bye-bye. So I'm going to try and kind of keep him over here and try it. Perfect. That is a beautiful fight. She would have never loved you. You will die where you stand. Come on. She is holding you back. Shove him into the pole again. And delete Darth Vader's health once again. And now we have one final quick time event. And a small little unskippable cutscene before that is time. So I just want to give all my shoutouts during this quick time event so that way we have a quick turnaround for the next run. Um, I just want to say shoutouts to the Force Unleashed community. I see two of you guys in here, Star Falco 64 and Lifelike. Lifelike is going to be the one running the Force Unleashed 1 at SGDQ, so make sure you guys check out that run. I unfortunately will not be able to attend SGDQ this year, but you guys definitely want to watch that run. It is going to be phenomenal. You will see the first game done very, very quickly uh, by Lifelike. It's it's such a great speed game, and you do not want to miss it. Um, and then other shout-outs, Starfalco64, been killing it on the 6th gen stuff. Uh, he is a absolute legend at Force Unleashed on PS2, Switch, and Wii, and PSP, as well as he just optimized Force Unleashed 2 on Wii. So huge shout-outs to you, Pricey but Icy. 
he's basically done everything, so he's great. Uh, huge shout outs to him. Also, the, real quick, the game tells you to mash Y. Uh, we're not going to do that. It's fine. The game doesn't tell you how to do it. The game tells you to do it. We're not going to listen. The game doesn't care. Um, also, shout outs to Coasters, uh, one of the mods of the game. It's been great to have him kind of run at least a little bit as he's been coming back. Um, yeah, so the Force Unleashed community is, is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Church and Sarge, for letting me do this run. I know my Discord completely pooped out during this run, so I can't hear you. Um, but thank you for getting this on the schedule, and I am so sorry for all of the scheduling issues that I've had. Um, like I said, schedule. Well, like I said during uh, pre-prod, is that scheduling and social links does not go well together. Um, any other shout outs that I might want to say uh, shout outs to the Lord of the Rings community uh, you guys are my home I love you guys shout outs to Midwest Speed Fest uh, they're a fantastic marathon organization absolutely love them they're my home marathon and shout outs to Running for Reels is a marathon organization that I run um, it is a, we actually have our games list coming out next week sometime so we're going to be hosting an event raising money for the Real Hope Project. So you guys definitely want to check that out. It has actually been crazy doing this games list because uh, we're running out of time and it's great. Um, we're, we have too many runs. Oh, time is coming up here soon. Uh, and we're going to do Dark Side Ending because I felt like it. Also, I have my splits up the entire time. Friends of GDQ all viewing here. That is a new world record. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. GG on the run. I know you can't hear me. Um, huge congrats on the world record. That's that's sick. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the Discord issues happened, so um, I want to say thank you so much for being on. I know you can't hear me. Everybody make sure to follow uh, Zojalex. Absolutely fantastic runner. I mean, as you can see, he just got the world record, so uh, definitely worth checking out. Give him a follow. Take a look at all of his runs. A very good speedrunner. Um, we do have more run coming up. We have Ghost Runner 2 coming up. Uh, before we go over to that, just a few quick reminders. You can join the official GDQ Discord now, and you can add the new hotfix role where you can keep tabs on upcoming events, talk with staff and showrunners, and more. You can use exclamation Discord in Twitch chat for more information. Also, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bitch Cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel do help support the Games on Quick channel and the GDQ hotfix. So if you like any of these uh, shows, uh, RNG, Random Number Generation, which is normally supposed to be here, Time Capsule, any of our specials, any of our shows, it really does help us put these on. With all that said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with Ghost Runner 2. See you in just a few minutes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. Today, it's not an uh, RNG, unfortunately. We are doing some other games that uh, I wanted to see run with some runners I wanted to see on the show. Uh, before we get into the second run of the night, uh, just a few quick reminders. Uh, if you're, uh, if you've missed out on any of our shows or our events, any of the things we've done on our Twitch channel, you can go check them out over on youtube.com slash games done quick. All of our VODs get uploaded there. And also, if you're over on YouTube right now, uh, be sure to press the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, it really does help us out. With all that said, uh, we have Ghost Runner 2 here, I'll hand it over to you, let you introduce yourself. Thank you, George. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? And today I'm going to give you a showcase of Ghost Runner 2, the speedrun. And my name is Sonic. I'm a runner of this game. And we're going to go over the in and outs of the speedrun of this game. And also talking about the game in general. And so for those of you who are not familiar with Ghost Runner 2, this is the second game of the Ghost Runner series. It was released back in October last year. And I always like to say that this is a combination of Mirror Set with Katana Zero. And there are going to be parkour elements. And also, um, it's a first person hack and slash game. It's centered in a cyberpunk setting with a, some post apocalyptic elements. I'm going to be running the any percent unrestricted category, which is going to allow me to do several tricks 
such as movement tech, uh, ability spam, vehicle and exploits, and also out of bounces. So some levels that usually take some minutes in order to finish, I'm going to just finish in, in just a matter of seconds. So yeah, I hope you like the run. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to make a fresh file, and I'm going to give you the candle, and we're going to start this run and explain a bunch of stuff about the game. <clears throat> okay. So we need to skip these cutscenes and then we can just start the run. So, and then three, two, one, go. Okay, we jump right into the game. As I said, this is a first person uh, hang sludge game. The very first thing I need to mention here is that the movement is very important for the round. One of the main core mechanics in this game is the use of dash which also we are combining with the slide and the jump. And we do some, a very particular technique called uh, Dutch Slide Jump, which is also called DSJ. So pretty much what happens is that when I do a dash, I slide and, uh, slide and then immediately do a jump. And that pretty much uh, keeps the momentum that I'm grabbing by doing a dash. I'm going to be using that in most of the run. And it's a very important trick. And it's like the main uh, speed tech in this run. Now, let's talk about the game a little bit. And so as I said before, this is a first person hang slash game. Um, movement, as, even if movement is very important, there's also combat mechanics in this game. Um, my character, Jack, is in, what can I say, in, a, in very layman terms, I'm a cyber ninja. I have a katana and I can kill most of the enemies by using a, uh, my katana, melee attacks, and also a couple of abilities. So, the gameplay loop in this game is mostly getting into a room, finding a bunch of enemies, and you need to kill them in order to progress in the, to the next area. So, the main, but the main thing is that um, I can kill these enemies with just one slice of my katana, but at the same time, if I get hit once and I lose um, or I get shot, I also die and I need to retry the, the room. So that's the main um, mechanics on the, the main gameplay in this game. Now, let's go back to uh, the the movement here. As you can see, I'm dashing and doing the dash slide jump. Uh, that gives me a bunch of distance in order to uh, make it to further uh, make uh, long jumps. However, there's another, uh, there's a big caveat in this um, mechanic, and it's the use of stamina. You can see that in the um, in the center. In my, Below my crosser, there's a bar that's depleting. That is my stamina bar. So if I run out of, of stamina, I cannot do the dash slide jumps. So stamina management is really important in order to like not lose any time. This is a feature that was introduced in this uh, in the sequel of this game. So what happens is that if I run out of stamina, I need to wait a couple of seconds until it refills again in order to um, keep doing the dash slide jump. So that's the first takeaway. So now we're here to, uh, to the right of the end of this level, and we're gonna go towards the very first boss fight. And uh, boss fights are quite particular in this game. Uh, each of these boss fights have a um, unique um, quick kill or strand that we can do in order to kill them uh, very quickly. So I need to clear this room. As I said, I need to kill all these guys in order to progress to the end of the level. And I need to do it in a, in a quickly fashion. Uh, oops. There we go. I I did there a parry. The, also, this game this game has parry uh, mechanic. We can just you can use to deflect uh, bullets, and I can just uh, reach, uh, they get shot, they get killed by the the reflect. So now we are in the very first boss fight of this game. This one has a very funny um, exploit that we can use. I'm going to do the very first uh, phase by just um, fighting normally. But once we get to the second phase, uh, something cool is going to happen here. All right, so we are not back. This guy is going to help us. Here I'm going to be introduced by the grappling hook. Uh, this is another like uh, movement tech in the run I'm going to explain later. But now I'm going to do a very cool shot here. So this guy gets a stun. I'm go what I'm going to do is going to get behind him and the AI gets lost, he tries to face me. So I'm just pretty much uh, playing musical chairs with this guy. And that pretty much locks him, uh, stun locks him. So I can just kill him with my katana without concerning in the 
a tank that he's doing, and that's lit. It's a very quick fight. And we're done with that. Now, this is another addition that happens in Ghost Runner 2 as well. It's the introduction of hubs, like this one. And it's a display over here. So in this place, you are you are supposed to like talk with your companions here. And it's pretty much the place when they talk about the lore of the game. And there's a bunch of conversations that I need to do a couple of menuing. I'm mashing through each of these conversations. Also, I need to... And here we're going to be introduced to something very important. It's this console over here. This is the place where I unlock my perks. There are a few of them that I'm going to be unlocking in order to go fast in this run. I grab a couple of them. I'm going to uh, put perks in my character. These ones are pretty useful. It allows me to, uh, to reduce the amount of uh, stamina requires to do... And, uh, to do it a dash. Here is Soy. And she looks like a light bulb over there. A little bit burnout. Sunburn. I'm playing with the uh, with a little higher brain settings. And the reason for that is that there's a few tricks I'm coming uh, next that are gonna require me to, uh, to do the the high brain settings otherwise I cannot see anything. So in this level we're gonna start doing out of bounces. This one the, this is the first one over here and we can make it to this bar without going to the internet path and here i'm gonna grab a very important item which is called the memory memory is the way that i can keep uh, unlocking um the perks that you saw in the previous stage it's gonna give me more slots for me to like uh, put more perks in my character I'm gonna go back to that very quickly. First of all, I need to do another out of bounds here. And for this one, it gives a huge uh, water section where I need to drain the water of a chamber. But I can avoid doing that by doing an out of bounds here. Uh, I'm kind of low here, so I need to climb back up a little bit. So we're in a little bit of climbing here. So what happens there is that I need to try to avoid a dead plane. That drop is way more precise than it looks because it's a dead plane that you can hit and you die. You have to retry the whole skip again. So I, I think we're good. Uh, yes. There we go. So this is keep us a, uh, the very first portion of the of the, of the stage. I'm gonna go over here and now, yeah, we make inside the cathedral. <laughs> and also you can appreciate how the textures are loading when you get inside here. All right, so. I'm going to grab the memory here. As I said, it's very important for me to grab these memories throughout the levels. And there's a little bit of routing behind them in order to... Uh, so I can, I can equip my perks. But also, the other reason why it's very important is because every time I reach um, a goal, this, this time if I reach uh, four memories, I'm going to unlock a very special ability, which is called Ultimates. Just like in any MOBA, um, Ultimates pretty much are a very strong ability that it has a very high cooldown in order to use again. So I'm going to show it when I finish this level. Uh, here we're doing a couple of skips as well. I'm going to climb this crane and I'm going to group with the pillar that's, that's right over here. And I guess this is a good instance for me to also uh, introduce the climbing here. Climbing in this game is also very important. It's way harder here because I need to make sure that I don't run out of stamina, otherwise I'm, gonna, otherwise I'm just going to start falling. Ah, uh, I think we're good here. Yes. Oh. There we go. So, this is the last part. I need to try to do a dash here. If, if we're lucky, we can make it to the other side. There we go. Excellent. First try. So, that skips a huge portion of this level. And now, we're going to grab the final. Uh, I'm gonna grab the final memory uh, chip and it's gonna unlock the first ultimate, which is called Flux. And you're gonna see exactly how it works because we're gonna use it like here in this in this final fight. So Flux is a ability that's gonna make us throw a laser and it pretty much kills everything that's on the screen uh, that's in front of him. It's a very hard ability to aim for aiming. And, but it kills like most of the enemies that you are aiming towards. And also it has a very huge range. And later on, I'm gonna use that ability, the laser, in order to kill enemies that are super far away. Like you can barely see on the screen. All right, so we are almost finishing this stage. Um, 
There's a cool trick that happens here. Uh, for some reason, the devs uh, left. They left um, uh, a level trigger that is like a very tiny um, square that's over here. So I can just do a slight jump over here and I can hit it right away. And that skips like around 10 seconds. Otherwise, I need to wait for a cutscene to show up. And it's probably to play. Okay. So we are now in the next level and there's going to be another out of bounds that I'm going to do like right from the get go. Also, this is one of the other main difference between Ghost Runner 2 and Ghost Runner 1. And Ghost Runner 2, um, the levels are way less linear. And this is a good example. And I'm going to find a character here. And in order to go to here, I need to go to three uh, hacking stations. And to get this guy. There we go. So the out of bounds is right over here. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Now out of bounds, I'm going to wait a little bit here until some of the uh, textures despawn so I can climb back up, uh, up here. And uh, here I'm going to use the dash slide jump to try to make it through a gap, which is this one over here. Nice. So uh, I forgot to mention very something very important. You saw me do the, the, the dash slide jump. There is another major thing that makes it uh, a way useful speed tank. Um, if I do a dash slide jump at DSJ while walking off a ledge, I gain way more distance. And I use it right there in order to make that escape. And that's another technique that is something you cannot learn like overnight. As you have to play the game a bunch of uh, around the game several times in order to get the feel of it or the gist of it. So now we go back in balance and we are in the first uh, hacking console. Now we're going to get introduced to the Cyberboid. So Cyberboid, every single time I need to hack something, I'm going to get inside this uh, virtual world, kind of like the Matrix, um, which we have a couple of things we have to do. There are going to be sections where there's combat, but also we have sections like this one we need to grab and uh, spoils in order to continue with the level. This is something that also was present in the first Ghost Runner game. Um, so one of the things I said before is that open world areas, um, this game is less linear than Ghost Runner 1. For example, in this one, you need to go uh, hack three of these stations and you can decide in which order you want to do it. I'm taking one certain run right now. Other runners, they, they like to do, do another route here, but you have a free choice here in order, in order to see in which one you're going to grab first. So there are going to be several levels like this one in, in this game, um, open areas where you you have a freedom of choice to decide where to go. Ah, I almost forgot here. I need to grab another memory here. This one over here. And because we're going to need to unlock a couple of perks later on. All right, so we're heading towards the second, uh, the second hacking station. There's a few jumps I have to do here, also, just to make sure I'm going to kill a couple of enemies. Uh, when I kill enemies, I granted uh, a little bit of, of data. Uh, what is data? Data is pretty much like the main currency of this game. Uh, I can use that data in order to unlock more perks. Like the first the, the first couple you saw me unlock like a uh, two levels ago. And this game has a little bit of routing. You need a certain amount of data in order to unlock uh, very important abilities for the speedrun. So you gotta make sure to kill uh, enough enemies in order to unlock them. Okay. So we are now in the second hack uh, cyber void section. This one is just more uh, combat oriented. We have to kill a couple of enemies here. So I'm using the, again my dash slide jump in order to uh, make it through wide gaps. So I need to kill this couple of guys here. This one. And I'm going to use the Shuriken. Ah, oh, yeah. Also, I have abilities. Right now, I'm carrying the Shuriken, which is this one. And there are three abilities that are going to be available for me in the game. And each of them are very useful for the run. And this one in particular makes me do, uh, makes me kill enemies uh, from range, rather than using melee attacks. And it's really possible to kill like the final enemy in a checkpoint, for example, right? So I can just then uh, kill them from range, right? And just going straight towards game to kill them with my katana. Another big now this 
Regarding the abilities, one major thing that happens here is that in comparison to Ghost Runner 1, in this game, um, whenever you out of combat, you can spam my ability, like here. I'm just spamming right now, and I am not losing any energy. The energy is the thing that you see in the bottom left corner of, of the UI. And that's a very useful feature. It's going to be useful later for the speedrun, uh, later in the run. So every time I use AM out of combat, I can just spam my abilities. So this is the final big room. I need to kill a couple of guys. I'm going to use my ultimate here. Uh, not like that, though. I need to kill this guy, this one. I'm going to throw my shurikens to this one. And I'm going to use the flux. And you can see, even though enemies are further back, they just die with the laser. Uh, there we go. Okay. Of course, <laughs> the further the enemy is, wait, the harder it is to aim for uh, with the laser or the flux, which is also very annoying for me. I like to play my games in a very high with a very high sensitivity map, so there's all my wrist is like working over time every time I try to do the, those. Um, skills so here we are in the final um cyber box section cyber void section uh, we need to kill this spheres over here these bolts we make sure we can and i can finish the stage um, this one over here and there we go and now we are good to go now we have to go to the at the beginning of the stage in order to finish the level so yeah, this is one of the rounds that you that you can take in this stage. There are other rounds as well. So the game is is half platforming and half combat, and there are going to be many encounters where I'm I cannot skip them. I need to do and I I am forced to do them. So here is some shurikens to open this path as well. That's also going to be useful later. That's going to be prominent later on. And now you're just gonna finish the stage. Go back from go back from where we enter. And also on the way, I'm gonna grab the next chip here. There we go. And we are done. Awesome. That's the level. Every level has an in game timer here. You can like uh, use this uh, this place to like try to compare your times and trying to get a PV. And also you can use it to uh, compare it against friends that you have in Steam. And now we have another conversation. As I mentioned, uh, these conversations are skippable. I'm mashing my, my space bar right now. And they go really fast. Also, it's pretty convenient that the best they leave the... They tell you which option you can pick in order to finish the conversation rather quickly. And they are highlighted in a, in a gold, in gold bat, basically. Okay. Now we're on this level. This is one of my favorite levels to run. Um, I'm gonna restart there. Oh yeah, I didn't mention this. You see me like respawning from time to time. That is called instant replay. And restart replay is a is a setting that's in the game that by default is off. But we pretty much uh, you can press a button and you can restart from the previous checkpoint. And we use that in the run very conveniently whenever we are clearing a room. And the moment we kill the final enemy, the checkpoint is gonna it's gonna trigger a checkpoint. So we can use the insta restart to go and to the to go to that checkpoint uh, quicker because it's completely a uh, position in the next area you have to go through. There's a few enemies here, I need to kill them. For example, here. I'm gonna res enter the start, and I'm, uh, the spawn location is way forward there. That saves a couple of seconds, and I'm gonna be using it a lot during the run. Mm. Okay, so I mean, now we are here in this area. And in this level in particular, there are a couple of out of bounces that we are gonna be using as well. And in this level is when we are introduced to the second ability, which is called Ghost. And we are not gonna see that <laughs> because we're gonna skip everything that's been involved unlocking that ability. There are a couple of puzzles that you have to like and do here, but we can just skip with that. And if I skip them, it, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna lose uh, grabbing the ability. It's gonna show up in the next level. 
But here's another like wave of enemies. You kill them, you sure can. Use the explosive barrels there to finish them up quickly, and I can keep going here. But, so now you're gonna do a couple of cool tricks. Um, so unrestricted is like the most popular category in this run. The other categories where you uh, where you can play without and uh, using any um, the bounces as well. By the way, that was a skip. By the way, <laughs> there's a wall there that you can just click through it very quickly. And the game is really generous with um, they didn't put like invis invisible walls everywhere. So there's a few uh, parts where you can just click through. For example, over there, that's the skip that I was mentioning. You're supposed to unlock your ability there, but we can just uh, go over the the, door, the gate and just uh, click through it. And here's another one coming up next. This is another section where we can just um, go to the next area. And we are skipping like a bunch of crypto on the game. Mostly like uh, puzzle type uh, rooms. So over here, we, we can just go here and. Yeah, that looks good. And got a plus. This is another part that if I play with my <laughs> default uh, brightness settings, I can see anything. So that's the reason why I play in a high brightness. But yeah, um, the game can look prettier than this, by the way. Don't use my gameplay as a reference for the gameplay fidelity of this game. <laughs> I'm playing also on the lowest graphics settings, so it, it runs way, way smoother. But yeah. So here's another clip as well. This is keeps uh, going for the skate. Uh, we can just go inside like that. Another skill. And now we are ready. Uh, so at the end of this level, at this level, there's another like huge um, area where you need to kill a bunch of enemies that are really scattered around the room, and that's why I'm saving my ultimate, the flux. Unfortunately, the flux has a very long cooldown. So, realistically speaking, in a in a speedrun of a level, I can only only use it once. So I need to make the best use of it. Uh, I'm gonna kill these guys. Okay. And we are reaching towards the end here, so I'm gonna kill the enemies here. Right. So I'm gonna use some with my shurikens here. I'm gonna use the plugs and try to kill all these enemies around here, this area. Okay, that's good. I can finish this guys up with the shuriken here, that's fine. And now we are heading towards probably my one of my favorite levels in the run. This is going to be the second boss fight called um, Avatar. And it's a bit different from your conventional boss fight. And you're going to exactly see how now. So first we're going to finish this level. We're going to skip this cutscene. And we are moving to the next area. So this level is really cool. <laughs> Uh, it is not a boss fight per se. I would have to. I need to kill a couple of enemies here in order to progress. But aside from that, this is not gonna be a boss fight. Yes, literally, it's gonna be mostly a platforming section that I need to do. But before that, I need to kill a couple of enemies here. I'm gonna use my shuriken here and then use a grappling hook to kill that guy, and I can move to the next area. So here we need to kill a bunch of enemies to lower the. The bar of the boss there, the Calabar that's in the upside. So I need to be fast reaching these guys because if I get close to them very slowly, they are gonna teleport away. But there we go. Okay, and go for the next one. Oh, by the way, also the music here is really cool. It's like top two of my favorite songs on the tracks in this, in this uh, game. Now for the next phase, uh, four like angels type of enemies are gonna show up here. I'm just gonna kill them. Okay, good RNG. Oh no, never mind. I didn't see anything. Uh, I'm gonna kill the final one, and then we're gonna go to the platforming section. And here is the the bane of my existence. This little uh, skip over here. I'm gonna try to make it over a uh, dead plane like this. And I can just do it for strain. Okay, it's not the bane of my existence. It's a trick. And very conveniently, um, the final section of this platform, the final part of this platform station is like right down below. And I can just make it uh, to the end like that. There's like a dead uh, trigger that avoids casual players for uh, 
from skipping that section, but if you do a um, dash slide jump like that one, you can just go down very, very quickly and skip a bunch of platforming. Now for this one, uh, as, as intended, we just have to go here and at the end, and now there's another skip here. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of climbing here in that structure over there, and this is an, also gonna skip a huge portion of the level of this section, that opponent section, which is this one. And this one's okay, nice. This one's really tough because it really depletes my stamina bar. Uh, okay, there we go. So the jumps are very tight. This is one of the things that this game has and compared to Ghost Runner 1. In Ghost Runner 1, you can like climb without concern about stamina bar. In this game, you have to be more careful with your spamming or your abilities here. Or the dash, I mean. And we are done with the section. And now we're gonna go again to the hub and do another conversation that we are forced to do. And after that, we're gonna start going for, uh, we're gonna do the very first major escape in this run which is another out of bounds. So in the next level, it's a very long level you do it casually because the, at the end of it, there's a huge gauntlet area where you need, where they're gonna send you like a bunch of way of, of enemies that you had to kill and there's no way to speed it up. Like it's a very long level, but fortunately for us, we can do a couple of out of bounds here to skip it all together because uh, very lucky, the end of the level is right next to the to the place where you spawn in this stage. <laughs> so we go here, and this is the gauntlet area where you're supposed to fight several enemies, but we can just go here and do an auto bounce like this one, and just go for the door from the outside to get being bounce and just trigger it again, and just finish the level in 29 seconds, as opposed to finish it in several minutes if I do the level as intended. All right. So here we're gonna be introduced. I'm, I'm gonna unlock my next ab ability, which is another ability that comes from Ghost Runner One. It's called the Tempest. Tempest is a really dang good ability, especially in the final levels of this run. It functions pretty much as a <laughs> as a force push from Star Wars. Pretty much, you can just push enemies forward, and also it's gonna be useful for another um, strat that we we do almost on the run. Alright, so we are on the quote-unquote demo level. This is a level that when the game came out, uh, well, when the demo was released, this was the level they used to showcase it in uh, the game. Also, I'm gonna start doing something very important in this level, and it's gonna be I'm gonna start farming for additional enemies. As I mentioned before, it is um, every single enemy uh, drops a certain amount of data, that's going to be my main currency. And I'm going to do exactly that. Uh, I'm going to need a couple of data, extra data, in order to unlock a couple of perks. Because I am going to use those perks to do a very cool trick later in the run. So I'm pretty much right now setting up the, the nest and the next trick that's going to come in the upcoming levels. So. I'm gonna take just a time, sweet time here to kill this enemy, just to make sure that I have enough money to do this strat, because it's one of the latest additions to the route. It was like implemented in this in the in the route like really very recently. Okay, I'm gonna use my ulti here because these enemies are wearing a shield. I need to kill a, a an orb in order to kill this enemy, but with the laser or the flux, I can just kill him even if he has the shield on. So yeah, from now on, I'm gonna start farming for additional enemies. Also, this game has a combo system, you saw, you saw in the in the left side of the screen. If I build up a, a higher combo, it's gonna grab me more and more data. So I, I won't try to do that. Also, this is Ghost. It's the, or Shadow, I mean, sorry. It's the, um, it pretty much in the, in the game, it, it functions as a cloaking device. I can use it to get closer to enemies and uh, without being attacked until I I'm the one doing the attacks. Okay. Uh, for example here, I can just go here, use my cloak, and this enemy is not gonna aggro, so I can just kill him when I get closer. And there we go. 
Now, this is another room where there's a pull out of bounds I can do here. I'm gonna use my shell again so these enemies are not gonna, are not gonna attack me. And just like that. I gotta skip that section. And we are almost at the end of this stage. And after this, another uh, gameplay feature from Ghost Runner 2 is gonna be introduced. Um, so, oh yeah, grappling hooks. That's another uh, mechanic in this game. It functions the same way as in Ghost Runner 1. Yeah. And you, you can see every time I do a grappling hook, I'm also immediately attacking. That short, uh, and the reason why I do that is because it shortens the um, the animation of grabbing the grappling hook, and that actually is faster. Uh, okay. As I said, I'm gonna kill a few FX enemies just to make sure that I can set up this trick uh, nice, very nicely. For example, here I'm attacking right after doing a uh, grabbing the grappling hook and uh, grabbing the using the, my grappling hook. And this is the final uh, fight here. I'm gonna use uh, my parry there to deflect that enemy. I'm gonna kill that guy with the explosive barrel. I'm gonna grab this his memory as well. And the very last enemy is like right around this corner. And we're done. Okay, awesome. And we finished the level. Nice. So now we're gonna get to a gameplay section that it was introduced in this game. Some people like it, some people didn't. I like it personally, so it's the bike sections. The bike and um, the vehicle rest sections are an introduction, as I said, of Ghost Runner 2. It was like the main uh, selling point of the game. For the speedrun, there are two types of bike sections that we're going to see now from, from now on in the game. Um, this is the first one, it's, and it's the bike only stages. What are the bike only stages? Uh, the bike only stages are uh, just a long track that we need to just uh, go through with our bike. So the only gameplay you're gonna see me is just driving the bike here, nothing else. And there are gonna be another levels where I is gonna be a hybrid of uh, going on foot and also using the bike because I, I can dismount the bike. We're gonna we're gonna see that in the next level. So first, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the bike sections here. Um, so the first thing you you see me that I am doing is that I am spamming my boost here. And the reason why I do that is because it makes better use of my of my boost uh, my boost uh, bar that you see in the bottom left corner. If I just hold the the button and uh, that that bar is gonna depl uh, deplete uh, quicker. Uh, no, I'm dead. <laughs> so yeah. Also, okay, I don't, need, I don't have to lose speed here. Uh, I'm currently chasing an enemy right now, so if I take my sweet time trying to do a couple of jumps here, I'm just gonna lose the signal and die. I just, just happened there. So I need to keep my momentum going here. Uh, so the main thing here is just not dying. Uh, um, it's, I won't say so to scroller because I also, I also lose time here. Oh, I, dis, uh, I die a lot here. But it's quite similar. Mm. Another thing here is that it's very important to use my boost when I'm jumping up ra uh, ramps, like that one, for example. That grabs way more momentum. But aside from that, there's nothing much going on. Uh, there are two main things you have to do. You have to spam your uh, boost and also uh, not die. So this is a very, um, not to scroll there, but a very like uh, long section where there's nothing much to speed it up. Also, I'm trying. I need to grab the chips, the the memory chips that are around here. Are going to be very important. And also, I'm going to do this by the way before I forget it later on. <laughs> and now we are out of the this area. Oh yeah. So I guess I can talk a little bit about the story of this game here. Um, we are. Well, in the previous level were set on this area called the Dharma Tower. It's so, sort of like a cyberpunk structure. And because of reasons of the plot, I, uh, I had to get out of this place and go to the outer world. So that's only what we're doing here right now. And this is pretty much uh, the second half of the game. All right. So I'm gonna try to not hit those little guys there. If I kill one of them, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Also, the bike has a 
it's a gun, a turret, so to speak. They can use to kill those enemies from far, afar. Alright, so... Also, since there are several enemies here, I can start uh, use them to build up uh, combos here. Uh, a combo. So they uh, I actually get uh, iron way more uh, data, which, as I said, I need in order to do a really cool trick later on. So I'm gonna kill this guy, kill this guy over here. And I just, we just keep going. So there's not much going on here, it's just like going fast and trying not to die in such a technical way and enjoy the music as well <laughs> I haven't mentioned it a lot I haven't mentioned it because I've been speaking a lot but yeah the music in this game is really good so I'm gonna just kill this guy just to make sure I have enough combos so I can like uh, unlock the next perks and the next level and we are most close to the end here oh and I die <laughs> okay There we go. Okay, now we are we are done with this section. There's gonna be one more section similar to this one later on. I mean, two more, actually. But this is the first one. So yeah, we are outside of the Dimor Tower. This is gonna introduce us to another gameplay mechanic, which is I mentioned before, and it's like the hybrid mechanic between uh, going on foot and using the bike. So we're gonna do exactly. So we're gonna do exactly that. So, in this level, Winds of Desolate, we start with our bike. And as I mentioned, we can also go on foot, for example, and I can do stuff like this, like this mount. This mount is going to be very useful in the speedrun, because it really uh, helps us build up momentum with the bike. Like, for example, if I want to jump off this ramp, I'm going to dismount here, and I'm going to go back uh, uh, go back in. The reason why I do that is because the bike just gets propelled forward very quickly and that uh, uh, makes me build up a bunch of momentum now. We're gonna head to this console right now and I'm gonna pray that I have enough money. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna grab this, 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 and this. Awesome, nice. I have enough money to buy all the perks, excellent. So you guys are gonna see the one of the latest tricks that have been discovered in this run, awesome. But before that, we had to go for this level and we will go a little bit on foot and also go on the bike. So in this level, what the developers trying to do, uh, intended you to do, is that you're gonna get in a bike section, go through this track, and you're gonna find a gate. And once you find the gate, you need to go on foot to find the the lever that opens up this gate. And you have to do that process like four times. We are not gonna do any of that because each gate has a very in, uh, unique skip with it and now we're gonna go to the first one so in the previous levels I uh, in the previous level I unlocked my second ultimate which is called blink and we're gonna use it in a very um, cool way here so I'm gonna add a memory just to make sure that I have enough slots I'm gonna use my bike here and I'm gonna climb out this wall the lever that opens the gate is right in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is gonna lock into this enemy, use the blink, and I can clip through this, uh, through, this through that wall over there. And I can just open the, the gate right away without having to do any of the on-foot sections, all the mandatory combat that you're supposed to do. That is the first one. Now we are going for the second gate escape, and this one is really cool. And this one involves me jumping off a ramp with my bike and trying to make it to the other side. I'm pretty much like cutting a corner, so to speak, here. Let's see if I can get it. So I'm gonna dismount here. Stormers of Temple. This is ramp over here. Looking good. Oh, nice. Awesome. So that skips the second gate. I need to like make it through a little gap with my bike and I can just get to the side. <clears throat> we, don't, we don't see any, not even the gate. All right, I need to hit the trigger there to spawn the bike again. And here is another one. This one is way um, simpler, so to speak. I can just do like boost like here, dismount, and I can make it to the top here and just kill this enemy. I'm gonna respawn, and luckily for me, there aren't invisible walls in this gate, so I can just <laughs> make it through there. That's the third one, and now we are going for the fourth one, and this one is also pretty cool. 
I'm gonna use the bike and I'm gonna launch me to the second floor here like this. I need to bring the bike here so I can keep moving with the stage. Uh, this enemy can be annoying sometimes, so just gonna kill him just for safety. And now we're gonna make it to the other side of the gate here by doing out of bounds. And fortunately, the the way to open it is like right in the other side of the, of the gate of the gate. And that's the four gate skip, and it skips pretty much all the on foot sections that. And they were required for you to do in order to finish this level. And now we are at the end. And there's a hacking station at the end of this, at the end of this level, and we're gonna go to the cyber void, the matrix of the day, and we have to do a couple of platforming. We need to reach this bar first, and I have to do a couple of jumps. I'm gonna respawn here. I'm gonna use my ghost so. These enemies don't see me, or, and they're gonna start shooting at the at the dummy that I left behind. And I can keep moving here, nice. And this is another out of bounds. Um, right, just going inside the map, I can just go side, and I can in, uh, go in bounds right over there. There's a small gap, and I can just hit the the hacking uh, point really quickly. Now, um, this hacking section is also another pain of my existence. Uh, it's a climbing, very huge climbing section. We had to go all the way up there. There's going to be, uh, in the casual playthrough, there's a bunch of platforming you had to do, but we can take a, a different route in order to climb that by using like the environment pretty much, which are like these structures like blocks over here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do so I can keep a huge portion of this stage. Um, on this final part of this stage. I'm gonna do dash slide jumps around here to make it for the same white camps. And then I can just start climbing. Unfortunately, this is, uh, these blocks uh, start moving up and down and it's sometimes really hard to try to uh, do platforming here because they're really unpredictable. Okay, that was the first like shortcut here. I hit the, yeah, the checkpoint nice. And the other shortcut is right around here. Once again, I'm gonna climb these structures that you're not supposed to. And we can make it right to the end, skipping all the platforming you're supposed to do. Uh, okay. I forgot something. Nope. There we go. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm gonna wait for the trampoline here. Yeah, here we go. Right, you're doing the long jump. If you die here or you fall here, you have to redo all the section. That's just why this can be a run killer. All right, that was wins. Now we are going to do the biggest skip in the run. This is a very infamous level and where, you're supp where each, every single person who plays this casually, it takes over an hour and doing because this is a huge open area where you're supposed to ride the bike and trying to hit uh, three different towers. And each tower, you have to climb it up go to the uh, hacking station that's in the top of it and hack it and then you can unlock the final stage or the, the final uh, the way for the end the level trigger we are not going to do any of that and this long level is going to just be done in a matter of seconds because there's a little strat we can do here I'm going to use the bike and I'm going to launch myself for the, to the, the final door here doing something like this I'm going to fly and I'm gonna start climbing the set door that blocks our way. And luckily for me, and uh, the size of this door, or this gate, and there isn't any invisible walls, so I can just make it through here. And I can go to the other level. And that skips the entire, the longest level in the run. And, on, and you can finish in like in less than a minute. All right, so now we are in the next boss fight, and this is another skip that we can do here. This is another like uh, on rail section, so to speak, or track section. But we can speed it up by doing this trick over here. Let's see if I can get it. Right, I'm going forward. I'm gonna go backwards, and I need to. I'm gonna go to bounce like this. And my the idea here, and it's to make it over that white gap. It is very important that I don't lose any momentum while getting and going out of bounds here because I need all of that in order to make it for the gap. So I can get it. This is one of the hardest tricks in the run as well. Especially at the beginning because you need to build up momentum and of course you are in very uneven terrain. 
Nice, okay. That's the first part. Now there's a second gap that's gonna come next. And so it's very important for me to try not to lose any momentum while going through here. I'm gonna refill my boost here and I'm gonna make it for this like ramp kind of thing. Oh, I barely made it, okay. Yeah, we are now at the waist yet. There's a final part I need to do. I need to get back in bounds. There we go. Nice. Let's go. Okay. I'm very glad that nice. went really quickly. So that speed us speeds up the, this section. This is um, another like kind of auto-scroller, so to speak. Ah, this is the third boss fight, by the way. Uh, this is Naga. It's sort of like a robotic sandworm that's chasing me right now. This is a very long chase sequence. Then I just skip a little bit by doing that out of bounds. And from now on, it's just a very... Um, it's not much... It's just like in the first um, bike section that you saw. You just have to not die, otherwise you lose a, a bunch of time. And another cool thing though is that the checkpoint systems in, the, in this game are very generous. Uh, there are very few uh, scenarios or very few parts in where you you die, you lose a bunch of progression. They've been they are very generous. So even though you you die here in the big scheme of things, you're not gonna lose that many, that many seconds. Oh my god, I'm doing this wrong. I have to try and get speed by this guy here. There we go. So yeah, that's the boss. We need to kill it. And for this first part, it's just only a chase sequence until we make it to the end. But yeah, after this, there's going to be and uh, the latest is skip that was all oh, the latest trend that was actually implemented in the run and it's gonna be useful in what is actually the longest level in the run which is really convenient um i have no momentum here oh my god can i make this by the way uh let's see no okay i was i lost the momentum there you, you are supposed to wait there but you can, if you are fast enough, you can actually make it before the this boss, the Naga, actually reaches that position. So, I wasn't very good with my uh, boost spam in there. That's why reason why they make it. So yeah, that's how I was supposed to look there. <laughs> the enemy is like right on the right, on, right next to you, and if you hit the hitbox, you are dead. And now we came towards the coolest part of this boss fight. Um, I'm gonna. I need to make this long jump. However, I'm not gonna make it. Instead, I'm gonna go inside the worm. And here in arm, this um, it's a huge like um, section where you're supposed to not die in. There's a, there's a bunch of these saws that are gonna start like showing up, and I need to try not to hit them. Uh, it can be annoying sometimes because the the saws are um, in a sort of like a global cycle. So sometimes you don't know in which position they are showing up when you like, get there. So those things that are in the wall is the, is the way to apply damage to this boss fight. You're supposed to use two cantana and slice them in order to do damage to the boss. If you are very, uh, if you lose your opportunity, you're just gonna run into the wall and just die. Or into the into the door and just die. There's also these enemies that you can you, you run into one of them and you're gonna die. You can just use the turret to. Uh, I cannot make this. This is what I'm talking about. And usually, you get a better cycle there, and you can just make it through that gap uh, without much trouble. I got unlucky there, so I had to wait it out a little bit, and that can be a little bit of time loss. Alright. So, we are now in the second half of this section. We, here again, we need to apply damage to the boss by killing those things on the wall. And I can just keep going here. But yeah. It's very fortunate that the, um, the checkpoints are really uh, generous here, otherwise you will lose a bunch of time. And now you just uh, keep spamming my boost in order to make it faster here. Unfortunately, there's this isn't much you can do here in terms of escapes. The only big escape that you can see, you can you can do in this very long section, is right at the beginning. We are close to the end and we can just move on with the next level. So yeah. The bike sessions are really cool. I really like them, the, the addition of those in the in the game. 
really fun to like replay over and over. And okay, now we are almost on again. So at the end of the section, we had to shoot like, the heart of the Naga, this robotic sandworm, and then we are good to go, which is right on here. So let me make sure I'm aiming properly. There we go, and just shoot it up, and we are done. And for somehow, I don't know how anatomy of worms work, we make it, we go out from the other side to the other side. <laughs> nice. All right. So I mentioned the, the setting of the trick. This is the place where we're going to do the, the school trick. This is mind games. This is one of the longest levels in the round because there's a lot of exposition or lore dumb that I'm going to be throwing in your face. But we are going to do uh, a couple of strands here in order to like, uh, make it way faster, so it's no much of a snooze fest. First thing first, uh... Oh, what am I doing? I can just jump, I was getting confused though. Okay. Uh, can I go? Give me a second. I, have, I think I messed up my keys here. Upgrades? Ah, yeah, there we go. There we go. I want to change my upgrades. Good job. So I'm going to put a couple of things important here. I'm going to use uh, this called the Flow Booster. The Flow Booster is an, ab is an ability or a perk that allows me to... Uh, no, I think this one. Okay, let's work out how to do this. There we go. Okay. The Flow Booster is an ability that every time I build up a very long combo, it's going to increase my uh, movement speed. I'm going to use that right now to do a, a few, uh, a little exploit. And if I do it correctly, I'm going to build up a very huge combo that is going to allow me to grant a huge, um, a huge um, upgrade in my speed. And it's coming right now. So how am I going to do that? How am I going to build up a, a huge combo in this game? Uh, luckily for me, there's going to be a bunch of enemies that are going to show up here. This guy's over here. I'm gonna use my Tempest. I'm gonna stack them up like this and build a combo like that. And as you can see, I'm running fast now. We are not, the last thing I'm gonna do is kill though, is I'm gonna kill this guy here. I'm gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna take this out. And for some reason, I still store the, the speed upgrade that I got. So for the rest of the level, I'm gonna be running fast. And that's one of the latest tricks that I've been finding this run. And it's very convenient that it happens in this level, which is one of the longest levels in the run. So I'm running fast right now. I don't need to do dash slide jumps anymore. I can just run it like this. Uh, unfortunately, it's only useful in this level once I get to the next level and this buff is gone, <laughs> sadly. Okay, so I'm in Simon Arena type of um, stage. There are gonna be four of them, and there's a cool strat we can do here. Let's see if I can get it. I'm gonna spawn my shuriken here. Okay, nice. Oh, cool. Nice. So what happens there is that I sh throw my shuriken like that, and just in the moment that the enemy, the first enemy of that way shows up, I kill him uh, immediately with my shurikens. So the, the game thinks that I finished the sequence and it's gonna hit the checkpoint right from the get-go or right away. So that speed us up the section um, a lot. And we can do that, that uh, a couple of times as well in the next two arenas. But yeah. So in this section, as you can see, I got the speed boost. I'm moving really fast here. I'm skipping a bunch of, like, I can skip a bunch of like uh, platforming I need to do. So I'm supposed to be. If you can see. The only uh, drawback from this is that it sometimes can be very hard to control. So you can use like your slow motion that you have in order to like try to uh, control it. Um, also, I build up like a combo for like uh, a 50 combo over there to get the, this grand this speed boost. And you can go higher than that, even to 100. However, there are two problems that uh, happens when you do that. Either you go super fast to the point that you cannot control your character, or most likely the game is gonna crash and you lose all your progress. So 50 is like the sweet spot and it's still like move fast. 
Uh, okay. I messed up the strat here, so I'm gonna use my flux here to kill these enemies and trigger the next area. Nice. Try not to fall here. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to do the same over there, trying to kill the, the, the first enemy that spawns like right away with my shuriken, so I can trigger the checkpoint way earlier, but I didn't get it, so I had to like finish up all these enemies and wait for this conversation to end. So yeah. In each of these arenas, there's a bunch of like conversation that explains a little bit about the enemy, the antagonist of this game called Mitra. We're gonna see and at the end of the, on the run. But yeah, and those sections. Usually in the old round, you're supposed to like do a bunch of platforming here, but now with this speed boost, you can just uh, straight up just run like this, boink, and like that. And skip a bunch of like the platform station they're supposed to do. So in these arenas, first of all, you need to do like a sort of like a puzzle piece. I need to kill this and uh, these shapes in the order that are shown in the and the top of this screen. So it's the last one. Okay. And now we have here um, another section where I need to try. I will try to kill the first enemy that shows up here again using my shurikens. But let's see if I can get it. Also, it's very important for me to let the enemies spawn in the in the map. If I kill them super qu quickly, uh, my game is gonna crash, and I have to redo the whole level again. So hey, let's go, but it doesn't happen. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit here on, for the enemies to show up. Oh, I didn't get it. Never mind then. I got the first one, so yeah, that's the consolation prize, I guess. Uh, okay. What am I doing? I'm not used to like killing this thing like this. I'm so used to like doing the the actual experience strat. Oh my god. There we go. <laughs> this does not look like an easy section to have to do casually. There we go. Nice. Okay, that took a while. <laughs> and yeah, every time I finish the arena, there's a little bit of uh, lower position here. There's a few scouts around here that are happening. So you have to wait it out. That's the reason why this is uh, one of the longest runs in the longest stages of the run. And we're good. So now we're going to the final area. The final like arena where we do the, the same stuff as well. And then we are good to go. And we can just go to the end game, the final levels of the run. So again, once again. And it's keeping a bunch of triggers. This is not how the stage is supposed to look. Uh, I don't make. I can. I cannot make this. I can make this. Okay, nice. Yeah. Sometimes I need to like uh, press my directional keys again in order to grab the the boost from the the speed boost that I got from the glitch. And now we're back. So this is the final uh, arena here. Oh my god! There we go. And once again, I need to just kill this this shapes better correctly. There we go. Unfortunately for this one, uh, the strand I was trying to do in the and the previous arenas doesn't work here, so I need to do it properly. Oh, I was. What am I doing? There we go. This one. Sometimes it's really hard to control the character, and sometimes even you, you, when you dash towards uh, one of these uh, things over here, it's not gonna jump. It's gonna let you jump up for some reason. Okay, so this is a much more conversation, more uh, exposition going on right now. Uh, we need to wait until this conversation finishes, and then I can just keep going with the stage. And I kill this enemy here. Um, as I said, unfortunately the strat doesn't work in this arena. Uh, even if I kill this enemy quickly, it's not gonna trigger the checkpoint right away. I need to kill the rest of the enemies. Okay, that's one. Here. And there we go. We are done with this level. This is a very long level. Uh, if you are really good with this strat, which I'm not by the way, because I learned like really fairly recent, and you can see up to one minute compared to the old route. Okay. So you have to wait a few little bit. Yeah. And we go here. 
Also, yeah, I forgot to turn on the the dialogue. This is not part of the speedrun. I just completely forgot about it. So I'm just gonna put them right away. So what now? If the cathedral disappears, cyberboy so right at the end here, there's a flat surface, so I can just run like this, and I can make it to the end. And that's it. That's the longest level on the run. And now we are in, we are doing another buy section here. And uh, this one is way shorter. There's a few strats we can do here also to make it a little bit quicker. I'm gonna spawn here, so I can like uh, pick up a bunch of momentum. And again, I'm using my spam, my boost spamming here to do my fans. But yeah, I believe it's that. I completely forgot that I had a dialogue option so up. Usually, when I do experience with this game, I don't, I don't have them on. I don't have them on. Okay, so there is a cute trick we can do here. Um, there is a cutscene that's gonna happen where it's one of the enemies that are gonna start chasing me and are gonna be introduced. Um, I'm gonna skip that cutscene altogether by doing again the strat die, the ultimate, using the ultimate that I mentioned before, the flicks. How I'm gonna do that is that I'm gonna dismount here, make it to this position. I'm gonna aim for the enemies like right in front of me. I'm gonna use the laser and I'm gonna kill him from afar. And that completely uh, skips the cutscene where this like bike kind of enemy is gonna show up and start chasing me and that's one of the strands we can do to speed up this section there's a couple of them that I'm gonna also do later on so we are heading back to the tower and all this this last like few levels were done uh, outside of the tower including like the huge uh, open world map and now we're gonna go back to the, the tower and more to the like cyberpunk and aesthetic of the game. I'm gonna use uh, the this one again to grab some distance here so I can make it through over that. And the laser over there. Uh, the only problem with this level, there are two big problems with this stage. Well, that can be very really difficult. And uh, there are gonna be a bunch of enemies that are gonna start shooting at me like the ones over here and these guys sometimes are very good with their shots and they can like land a shot on me before i kill them with the explosive barrel and that uh, pushes me back a lot the other thing is that there's one checkpoint over here that is a very long one and if you die you can lose up to 20 seconds so Probably, I would say this is one of the hardest like uh, bite sections in the game because it, it, it really punishes you, punishes you if you are if you die. What's the other trick I can do here? Uh, you can make it for the scab and die. Never mind. Let's see if I can get it. No, I didn't get it. Okay, I'm gonna just go for the other way. You're supposed to make it to there, it's a little shortcut and you can avoid going to go for the around this area, just Frank. Okay, the guys over here, let's see. Okay, they behaved. They were yeah. I was very lucky there. Sometimes you can land a shell on you before you kill them and the ship is kinda of further back there. Now this is the tricky part. Uh, there isn't a checkpoint in all this area in the, the section, so if I die I Gonna lose so much of seconds. And I had I can do a shortcut hit rather than doing the turning around over there. Jump over here. It's very important to not die here or into something here. And I got a checkpoint. Okay, let me make it for the part. All right. We are now almost done with this section, and we're gonna head towards the next boss fight of this game. It's called Dismantler, which, just like all the, the other boss fights in the in the run, they have a very uh, unique gimmick. Oh, I ran into something there. Uh, I get to this part again. But yeah, this is like the the tail end on the on the run. I kill this boss and then there are two more uh, levels and the final boss. 
So for the final section, uh, when I'm going on flick, there's a little shortcut I'm gonna do. So run and doing doing intended battle again, just like climb here. As I said before, they were really generous with the you know, putting invisible walls everywhere. And there's gonna be a better example later on, because the max are gonna get bigger and you're gonna see how much other bounce I'm gonna do. Uh, it's a good spot here. I'm gonna push this button. This is like a challenge uh, you can you can do when you play casually. But for some reason, if you push that button and then restart the checkpoint, you skip the section there. That was another like gauntlet kind of scenario where you had to kill a bunch of enemies in order to progress. All right, boss time. Um, this is the smantler. This. Bosses can be quite annoying. There's a few stuff you can do. Uh, first of all, it has three health bars. Uh, he's gonna turn into different states. Now he's gonna go green, and now I can just hit the the green health bar. When it's in this state, uh, it's gonna spawn this kind of like three kind of things that I need to kill super quickly. Otherwise, he's gonna start healing up because the boss is healing up. Okay, now it's in blue, and when it's in blue, uh, he's gonna start doing this knockback and also using the his uh, machine gun like that. But just like in the very first boss fight, I can just go and uh, go around him to try to not get a uh, shot. Right. I'm gonna use a pretty cool strat here. Um, I have an ability right now, another perk that I got called uh, Surge, which whenever I get a fight, uh, a fight combo. I'm gonna unlock a very. Uh... Oh no, I didn't get it then. Okay, I'm not trying. So I can show it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna build up a fight uh, combo. Like this one. And gonna be able to use the range ability. And lucky for me, this range ability uh, destroys the trees pretty quickly. So I can move on with the next phase uh, right off the bat, uh, way more uh, quicker. So now we are in the, again in the red state. Uh, whenever he's uh, like that, he's gonna start just fighting me from melee. Okay, this is another like green state, uh, green section of face. I'm gonna kill this free. Uh, I'm missing one guy, right? Yes. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna go here and do the exactly same thing I did in the previous green phase. Kill this enemy. I'm gonna use my cloak so I can like do this without okay, being bothered by these guys. I'm gonna align myself and use the, the range animation. And just like that, we kill all the freeze like very, very quickly. Right. Instead of just going towards each of the trees and and destroying it in the intended way. And now we are in the final phase. Uh, this phase sucks because the enemy is gonna start jumping to the other extreme of the or the other side of the of the room. And now we're in the final phase. This is like, kind of like an enraged phase. The enemies uh, are gonna attack it's gonna attack quicker, so it's gonna be harder to land some parries. There we go. And that's the boss fight. Now we are in the final levels of this run and I'm gonna unlock a very important ability that is gonna make it's gonna break the more in the game way more than I already did. I'm gonna go here to this console. I'm gonna grab this, this, and most importantly, Pressure Booster. Pressure Booster is an amazing ability. Uh, why is it amazing? I've been using the ability called Tempest uh, as of now. Well, that Tempest ability has, if I wear the actual perk like this, for example. Uh, okay, nice. Uh, that Tempest ability is gonna grind uh, if I aim into the floor and I start using it, I'm gonna get some, uh, I'm gonna be propelling, but basically I can okay. jump higher. It pretty much works as a rocket jump from other games like Quake, for example. So here's an example. I'm gonna do it on the floor and I can just fly. Now, we're gonna use this in the upcoming two levels, this one and the other one, in order to do major skips. The first one is right over here. And luckily for, for some reason, the depths again, they left a, a trigger that's way ahead of the stage and I'm gonna try to hit it by doing the Tempest Boosting. This is called Tempest Boosting. If I do the spamming in the in a wall, I'm gonna start like, I can just uh, go up. So I'm gonna go here and I need to land a trigger. There we go. Nice. 
Okay, and that skips a huge portion of the stage. Um, this is, used to be a very long level. In the first iterations of this run, we were, we uh, we used to do way more of this stage. But with this run, we can just go to the range again. And uh, what am I doing here? There I go. So Tempest boosting just works like a, as a rapid jump, and oh, I'm just hitting that spider over there. Okay, I mean, super unlucky with my enemies. And we can use it to go really far. So that's the reason. Um, so why is this possible? It's because, um, as I mentioned before, whenever I out of combat, uh, I can just spam your abilities, right? So I can combine that with the Tempest, uh, spamming my Tempest, and I can just do Tempest boosting and to get to skip huge portion of this level. Here I'm going to use it again to go out of bounds, and here I'm going to go to the end of the level. Like this. Uh, here. And here's the end of the stage. And now we have to go back in bounds. And before that, I need to uh, trigger something that's part of the mission. That's this one, this one here. Now I can go here, respawn. Use my cloak here so this enemy is won't I won't get spoiled by these enemies. And I can finish the stage. And there goes the level, which are is way longer, both in casual perspective and also in the very old rap of this game. And now we are in the second to last level, and this is one of my favorite levels in the run. And um, I'm gonna be introduced to a certain uh, equipment called Windsuit that allows me to fly. And because of that, uh, the design of this level is just like that. Uh, it's gonna be huge open areas, uh, a lot of verticality. And because of that, I can use Tempest boosting in a more free, uh, free way, so to speak. So, Wingsuit uh, allows me to fly, pretty much. And it allows me to shorten distance if I uh, short, uh, if I mess up my Tempest boosting here. But yeah, this one is really cool. Because uh, you can do stuff like that. The rocket jumps and make it to the other side really quickly. So, because the maps are huge, that means most of the sections here, uh, they don't have invisible walls. <laughs> so you can clip through them, like for example over here. And do stuff like this and go to the next trigger, the next checkpoint right away. It's all that stuff. I need to launch over here. Okay, so I was short of distance there, so I can use my wings there to, to try and uh, to make it without having to restart the the checkpoint. And yeah, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff right here right now. I, there are several fights you are supposed to do, but you can do it with the Tempest boosting. Right. Although the next fight is mandatory. There's a few mandatory fights I need to do, so I'm gonna make this quick. I'm gonna one, again build up a uh, fight combo so I can use a range attack over this enemy and it's gonna go, go down very quickly. Again here, I'm gonna go out of bounds. And climb a big tower here, like this. There we go. And use my windsock to make it to the other side. So this is another skip we, we do in this stage. This is amazing. It's one of my favorite levels to grind because it, it looks pretty cool when you are like, you not know, using too many uh, instant restarts. Uh, okay. Fair enough. I think I have enough booster to make it to the top there. Yeah. And now we are into the the final uh, fight sequence. After this, this uh, the, the final boss fight. But this is like the last uh, room, like this one. There are several enemies scattered around the map, uh, or the state, the room. I'm just gonna use my flux to kill the enemies that are from the in the in the left side. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna kill with my range. I'm gonna kill this guy. Use the hurricane here to grab to grab to that guy. Another range there to kill that one and finish up this one. Awesome, nice. That rune is really hard to do, and because I was, I'm, as I mentioned, uh, I play this game with a very high high mouse sensitivity. So using the the blocks, the lasers, sometimes it's kind of hard for enemies that are super far, uh, further further, really far. And here's on the skip, 
it's supposed to like TB our grappling field, but we can just use the Tempest boost there to make it. Let's try again. Okay. And that's it. And this is this is like the actual final room, but luckily for me, uh, down below here there's an open area, a gap where you can just make it bounce again. <laughs> And use the last two Tempest boosting to make it to this offside span and keep the final trigger. And now we are towards the final boss and the final boss of this game, Mitra, which is RNG Hell. And this boss has several attacks. And some of them and it's gonna make you lose a bunch of time, like this one for example. Okay, he be this one too, because he despawns, so he's out of screen. And you have to wait for him to show up again, use a parry, and then apply the damage. Now, every time I do a certain amount of damage, I'm gonna get inside the Cyber Boy section, and there's a few skips we can do here. I can reach this boss before it starts moving forward, like this, and that skips a huge section of the Cyber Boy. Like that. And there are, there's more platforming you're supposed to do there because every time you get close to Mitra, it's gonna start uh, moving forward. But if you are fast enough, you can just reach him. And now, this is another cool escape. We're gonna do exactly the same over there that we did in the, pre in the first Cyber Point section here. So, this is cool. I'm gonna. Okay, he's in the right position, so I can actually show this. And um, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna go past him. And go around here. And no. One second. I'm not getting like the boost from I need to. There we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to land hit on him while he's in the air. He's moving forward like this. Uh I think this is good. Uh, uh, nice. Let's go. That's it, the other. That speed up sub the section very quick uh, fairly quickly. And now we are heading to the final phase of the uh, fight. It's pretty much the same, uh, it has different attacks. Some of them, they, they're gonna make you lose a bunch of uh, your, your sweet time. There's also this like big laser that's showing up right now, that one. I mean, things way harder. One thing you can do to speed up the situation is trying to land some perfect parries on the enemy. Every time you land a perfect parry on a boss fight, it's gonna deflect some damage and you can like deal more DPS to the enemy, so it goes down really quickly. And now we are close to the final cyber boss section. This one also has an, uh, the same mechanic. I can catch the boss before he starts. Uh, never mind. Before he starts like uh, escaping. Let's see if I can get it. No, I didn't get it. This one is, is, is the toughest to get. It's not very consistent. So I need to do this section I, as intended. There we go. Oh, I can get it like that. <laughs> okay. I got enough time there. There we go. That's the final boss. Now, time eh, is not yet. This turn is not over. There is an epilogue I need to do. We need to talk with my companions on the half, and then I can leave, and then the run is done. So, yeah. We're almost at the end, uh, so I just want to take the time here to thank you for the invitation. I really love uh, showing you this run. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, just want to give a big shout out to the Ghost Runner community. Um, the moment this game dropped, uh, people were already like posting uh, clips of strats and building up a road fairly quickly. So shout outs to them, to all the top runners, also the people who took the time to find the, the skips. I hope I did justice in showing this game uh, and this, oh, this show. All right, so time's coming up. I just want to leave this area and we are done with game. Time. There we go. <laughs> GG. Thank you very much. That was enjoyable. Uh, Ghost Runner 2 is a very fun game. I would highly recommend this game's both the first one and the second one. If you are like, looking to some like haggis like action. And uh, I got nothing else to say. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. It was really a blast. And I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the show. There's still more runs to come. So that's all. Uh, George, take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you being on. This was an absolutely fantastic showcase. Everybody, be sure to follow Al Mac. Uh, definitely a very good runner. Uh, you do more than just Ghost Runner 2. But uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Be sure to follow him. Uh, with that said, uh, we do have more show coming up for you. That's all for me. 
uh, tonight, but we do have time capsule coming up, so we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with time capsule after that, and random number generation will be back in two weeks from now, 7 p.m. Eastern. So I uh, hope to see you there as well. Have a great night, everyone.